Hello and welcome to the Ruby Podcast. I am the Grinch who stole Christmas, Mediocrity 4. <laughs> it is I, High Powered, and I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas because we won't be able to say that because we're not going to get an episode next this weekend, unfortunately, but that's not surprising. Uh, and we have an episode today. <laughs> and you still haven't said yeah. your name yet. Like, <laughs> that happens every... Power. Oh, that's true. You say it too early. I get confused. <laughs> I guess I'm already getting drunk off of my scotch, and I got my British hat on, so I'm like, all 25% of my Britishness is on full display right now. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, yes, you can't be too Merry British Christmas! Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody, because Happy Holidays is bullshit. I am dude, what the heck? Yeah, this is Trump's America. We say Merry Christmas now. <laughs> well, I said Merry Christmas when it was Obama's America, and I will say Merry Christmas when whoever fucking America it is. Do you want to say Happy Hanukkah? Do you want to say Happy Hanukkah? I will say Happy Hanukkah. But let's be honest, well, it's not the no. Jews that are complaining about it. Yeah, here, here's my philosophy. Whatever you celebrate, say that. Yeah. It's yeah. very simple. My it's, roommate, my roommate in college, my roommate in college was a hardcore atheist, and he hated people saying "Happy Holidays." It's like, fucking Christmas is great, man. I don't know. I miss my roommate. He was great. <laughs> he was great for that reason. It's just an excuse where you could throw parties and like give gifts to each other. Exactly. So anyway, yeah. Fuck Happy Holidays, but. <laughs> And then, and then uh, Robert's like, enjoy Mormon Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Joseph Smith was born on January on uh, December twenty third, but <laughs> no, we <laughs> we have two major celebrations this this year. We have three major, yeah, we have three very important days all in a row: Joseph Smith's birthday, the, or yeah, uh, <laughs> Christmas Eve, and then Christmas. But no, yeah, ha you know, Merry Christmas. I'm dreaming of. I'm gonna be dreaming of a white Christmas because I'm gonna be going home to Arizona for the for Christmas. But um, yeah, I'm Robert. <laughs> I'm dreaming of a brown Christmas. <laughs> yeah, because everything's on fire still. In it's more no, it's more like uh, brownish, like tan. reddish brownish. Yeah, yeah. reddish brownish tan <laughs> with some cacti. You know, that's that's. Yeah, I hate exactly. snow. It gets everywhere. <laughs> no. no. What, what, Robert? What what part of Arizona? Uh, Gilbert. It's in the Phoenix area. Oh. Then you're then you'll be you'll be in a uh, Razor Pisses area. But uh, I, I have yeah. a, I have a cousin who lives in Tucson. Okay. And All right. That's one reason why I why I care about Arizona politics and stuff. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, we have an episode, and uh, it's not uh, a sock, good sock, sock, sock. Come on. <laughs> it's fine. Well, I won't wish you a Merry Christmas, but I will wish you a uh, happy holiday. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah okay. So, so yeah, we, 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 have, we have an episode this week, and yeah. it's not a good one. I did not like this episode. Um, you said that about the, la the last one, but you had to like watch it like multiple times in order to like, okay, I... Never mind. I see where it's going. I like it. Now. Here's the thing. I like the ideas last week. Um, yeah. yeah. Did not like the execution. I felt like it was just too much, too fast, and it took away from a lot of what previous episodes had going for them. Yeah. This episode so exacerbates those issues. Um, and to to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about, I have to talk about some of, some of the news that we that we've gotten. Uh, oh yeah, we've got a PSA that we have um, to give to the audience. So yeah. so. There are only going to be 13 episodes this volume. Yep. They changed it last minute. They changed it most likely uh, mm -hmm. for Genlock, uh, because, Gen because Genlock is premiering on the same week at, on the same weekend as uh, episode 13 of this volume. Mm. And so, if they were going 14 episodes, then it would just take away from the viewership numbers of Genlock episode two, with with mm. uh, with the volume six finale uh, most likely crashing the Rooster Teeth website. Um, and, and so we're yeah. most likely going to have two episodes that, that were originally planned to be two different episodes smashed together for the finale. So expect like a 30. I am yeah, expecting like at least a 30 minute episode. 
Because um, they, mm-hmm. they've clearly done most of the work already because they obviously were yeah. more prepared this volume than previous than yeah. the last volume. So we're probably it's not yeah. the, we're not more. we're not really getting less content probably. At least yeah. very Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Again, like this this was a last minute change. They just announced this a few days ago. Um And that's it, fine. To, like to it doesn't really like, bother uh, me. So and they did that as part of uh fixing some of the misinformation that had been out there for a while now with uh when the break was happening. We we were thinking that the break was going to be on the 29th it's going to be this saturday the 22nd yeah and the 29th is going to have an episode which uh, reminds me we need to talk about next... um we need to talk about our schedule for when i'm in japan because i do yeah. still want to make the podcast <laughs> yeah i yeah, think we'll, it'll be we'll... f- i won't be able to record though by the way just so you know yeah because i won't have obs yeah. so we'll have to have high power yeah. somebody else too yeah. but yeah, i, think I do think, think it might be have. fun it might be fun to have you know the podcast with somebody coming live from weeb headquarters yeah. Just saying, I will. I, mean, be... I can't do it. Someone needs to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, isn't weeb actually though a phrase referring to white people? In true. Japan? Okay, then otaku central, whatever. But like, whatever. it's still like yeah. it's still so, me- yeah. it's still the holy land for weebs, right? Like, it's just like yeah. sure. Yes, yes, it it is. Is. Which, is, <laughs> which is honestly not even what I like best about Japan. It's actually the clothing, but it, it, it is uh, and the, the food. Mecca for, it, it yeah, is I would the say the food for children. <laughs> it's the, the Japanese know. cuisine like makes everybody else's food look like fucking garbage, including the. Oh, uh, and yes, also we were exposed it's, it's to ridiculous. Or two on the internet so, recently, also with the live action Sonic trailer. Uh, yeah. Oh my god! No, no, I, the, wait, is that trailer, actually real? I still don't uh, think poster, that's real. Poster, it is. I am ready to burn this thing thanks to that fucking movie. Uh, I'm so uh, pissed uh, off about this. I want to. I want to curl up into a ball and spin dash away into a corner to cry. Okay? Yep. Yep. Guys, yeah. I really thought that was a joke. I'm not even kidding. I no, really... it's a thing. Apparently, they, like, even a year ago, they had like a like, they had little, little I thought it was a joke. promotional art for it, yeah. but yeah. they're no wow. longer doing that. Anyway. So... Also, also, just so you guys know that how unprofessional we are, uh, the moment you guys heard that there was only 13 episodes was the moment I heard there were only 13 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea until media said that. Oh, no. Oh, I've, well, I've, I mean, yeah. they, I've they, known. they just announced it. Uh, Carrie made a post on Ro- on the mm. Rooster Teeth website. Last like, Saturday. Like, uh, more important news, yeah. though. More important news, though, was the confirmation that John... Uh, sorry, not John. Ren and Nora are sharing a room in the house. Yes. Um, <laughs> we'll, 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 get, we'll get to that later. So, the point I was trying to make with uh, them mashing together two episodes, why not yeah. these last two episodes? Agreed. Yeah. Do, wait, because, by the way, uh, do we know for sure it's going to be the two finale episodes? We Probably. don't. We don't. We, we don't. don't. Okay, we okay, don't okay. It, it could yeah. be episode, uh, what was supposed to be episodes 12 and 13. Mm-hmm. Uh, that they mashed together, yeah, okay. and, and yeah, then the finale knows, still just. just yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's what I wanted to know because uh, that would that'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um. Because I think cut some of the stuff out of these two episodes, rearrange mm-hmm. some stuff, and streamline the process, and you'd have a really solid episode instead of two. Meh. Not so good yeah. episodes, and I yeah. think last episode was better than this episode. Um. Reason okay. being, uh, the good stuff last week was actually like pretty good, whereas the good stuff this week was still like okay. Yeah, but yeah. We'll, I, we'll, I, we'll get to I, that there, when there's we There's something still better this episode volume. had and, and like the, one of the cringiest moments. Well, yeah. The thing is, the, wor- the the best part of this episode for me, which obviously was Jean almost killing Oscar's hard, uh, that kind of yeah. was already ruined by the preview of next episode. So it's like, then yeah. the best thing about this episode is kind of already ruined. Actually, um, I actually did. I forgot about the rewind. Uh, what happens in the preview? They go out looking for. We're, we're, they, they're, well, I mean, that's a given. That's a given. But but John specifically says. John specifically John, says you know, he feels out. bad for like being mad at Oscar. I mean, you could have told that from this episode. Yeah, yeah, like, like, you did see that he feels reason, kind of guilty reason. about it. Yes, yeah, like literally, as soon as he's like John, he's like he likes like oh, fuck, right? This is this is not right. I'm sorry. This is not <laughs> you can tell that you no. yeah you can, well, yeah, you can tell that from yeah. We'll talk about we can talk about that. Do we yeah, want to like I agree them. with media. Like maybe you could put the episodes together, but I don't agree about uh about cutting the content. I mean, yeah. just oh. same thing. So, you want, so but... here's how here's how I would have structured it. Uh, 
the Cinder Neo scene from last week doesn't need to exist. Yeah, yeah start the episode Agreed. off with Maria's Start the episode, yeah. Start mm -hmm. the episode off with Maria's flashback. Then from there, have Maria explain the Silver Eyes and what, what basically kind of what she explains in this episode, right then and there, and then have Jean call, and they reach Argus, and then they reunite, and then um. Uh, before they even get to Jean's house. Uh, Ruby's like, hey, we should we should try the um, military base since we're like right here, and then make a scene, make a version of uh, this opening scene that isn't a freaking cringe, cringe fest, that, that isn't a massive cringe fest, and then yeah. when when everything is like such wit, such determination, shut up, <laughs> and, and then uh, <laughs> and then when 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 they're at Sorry. that when they're at that low again when they're like crap we don't know what to do uh where do we go from here then ruby asks, like so where have you guys been staying and then we get to, then we get uh the light-hearted stuff with with saffron and tara and adrian and we get that and we basically get that scene verbatim yeah that scene uh, was good last week that scene was yeah. actually solid and then, so, and then somehow so, someone uh, brings up Ozpin, and, and then uh, like, uh, yeah, we need to talk about that. And then cut to like, they're in a different location. Cut like they're talk. talking, like, like no, they're they're talking like outside, away from like Saffron and them, away from yeah, Brian the Ears, or whatever. And then and Jean starting to lose his cool. And then that, and mm. then that's how, and then that's how the episode ends, with um. With with like them starting kind of cool off and then uh, Oscar runs off like actually show Oscar running off Don't have Blake be like it's Oscar. He's gone missing actually show Oscar like alone outside. Yeah, that when would have been a lot better when, when everyone else when everyone else goes in to cool off Oscar stays outside and he goes the other way like he doesn't yeah. even go back in so yeah. there's like hops the fence or something Yeah, yeah. there's a couple yeah. of things I do want to give this episode credit for though because it definitely could have been worse like I agree, this is probably... It's still not my least favorite episode of the volume. Honestly, still the, the, the Gods episode is still my least favorite. I, I, It's just... It's so long and unnecessary and wasn't that well executed. Like, so... But either way, this is definitely... I, I think this was worse than last week's episode, yes. Um, which puts it pretty low down. But, again, it's still not terrible. And I want to give it a couple points of credit which i know funny for me to be the guy doing that but <laughs> but well i think the really like the strongest bit of this episode was the moment between like maria and ruby even though ah, see, I... is kind of dumb i i personally liked it ah see that's actually i didn't like, like that that basically... much yeah probably... uh, we'll so get to that we'll get... like that's the last the that's episode. the last part of the episode but really the, the the good parts of this episode that i think I, I think are important are um one i really like first of all Yay for everybody still being mad at Ospin. Fuck Ospin. Secondly, uh, I'm glad they're being consistent with that. And I do understand why they're not, why, you know, they're, they're still trying to be sympathetic toward Oscar. Because even though his character was executed poorly, he hasn't done it's anything. It's really not his fault. It's not his fault. Like, I, even I don't want, like, that kind of bullshit to because it wouldn't make sense. It's, it's not his fault he's a badly written character. Yeah. You know, if, if that makes sense. But it's I like that they're still mad at him. Yeah. And I like that, um, it's not just Jean. I like that Nora seems to be just as angry, almost as angry as he is. Like, she is being just as mad and, like, yeah. like what's the question they ask? Like, is it, you know, is it really that bad? Or, like, what are we, you know, is it really that bad or something? And she's like, I don't know. Like, no, the, that fact was, that like, off, the fact that Nora's pissed off is saying something. Uh, and Ren. And you can tell Ren's yeah. pissed, too. And, like, it's, but that was well executed, still yeah. within his character. I like that, at least in that scene, they're kind of back to being themselves, and Ren isn't just doing exposition dumps. Like, you can tell he's mad, but he's still doing it in a Ren like way, where he's just, not overly pissed off yeah. for no reason. So I do like that. And, um, yeah, that's a about it because i actually especially on second viewing i do not like the maria and ruby scene that could have been see, executed I'm, a lot I'm different better different than you there media like my opinion of this episode well like the first part was just kind of like a cringe fest but the second half yeah. i i oh, like more upon second viewing. one more thing real quick i also like that we didn't get they didn't 
waste time re-explaining anything from Ozpin. Because they would have yeah. done that last volume. They would have killed time by doing it. I like how they just cut to John's punch. That's actually really good because they could have... This episode would have been yeah. so much worse if we They've had to something. hear them. So, <laughs> yeah. that's good and I'm happy and, about that. So, that's important. Yeah. It's, yeah. Is it and sad? I think, I think a real testament to, like, I don't know, just kind of going from beginning to end here, but I think it's a real testament to how terrible the beginning of this episode was oh, that God. on Ruby Rewind, nobody even remembers, like, the lady's name. I don't remember her name. Like, it was like and Carol I don't Cordovan. Know. I, don't care. I remember her name is Cordovan. That's only because it's a type right. of leather, and I'm really into like clothing and boots and stuff. And Cordovan is a type of oh, leather no. people use. Comes from okay, the, but it yeah, comes from like, Cordoba, Spain, which is where it was originally tanned. Sorry, yeah. nerd. Other different like, kinds of nerds. I think, a, cord I think yeah. a Cordova is a bottle of a Benelli shotgun too. Yeah. yeah. So but that's that's the only reason why I remember probably. her name. Yeah. But like even on Ruby Rewind, nobody had anything good to say about it. Everyone like, pretty much everyone hates her. Pretty much hates this scene and can and like no, I don't think anybody even remembers her name because yeah, yeah, it was all just cringy as oh, yeah. Get out. It they was tried, not fun. They tried to make Nora funny work, and they like, even failed at that. Like her joke at the end made no sense and it wasn't it wasn't dumb enough to be funny dumb. She's the little old lady who lived in this shoe. That's yeah. the joke. And and the other thing, but, the other, I don't know. I did I. I think the funniest thing about that entire thing was John's response to Nora, this whole thing of just, like, just that deadpan way to tell her, Nora. Well, I actually <laughs> thought, and the other thing was, because her, and Nora's line earlier wasn't, I couldn't even understand what she was saying. Like the last She said, your, your base looks like a shoe. No, 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 before that, the, her, her line before the last line, like when she was just uh, yelling from the back. It was around the lines of, and we're not going to stop until you let us through, or something like that. That wasn't, see, that's not funny. Like, that's just her being more of a caricature again. Yeah, I mean, that, thankfully yeah, she goes, thank ba th she goes back to being, like, real Nora later on in the episode, but it, yeah. which is just more speaking to how ridiculous that scene was. To me, the only time I laughed during that entire scene was when Yang goes, was that really all necessary? Which... Is almost like speaking for the audience, which is the reason why yeah, exactly. I laugh. It's like Yang is literally speaking for the audience. Is this entire yeah? Scene, is, is this entire necessary? yeah? Is this entire they, scene necessary? And like I pointed this out, there was no reason for the commanding officer to not be Winter. It still could have been Winter, and it all like this has me wondering. I don't know. I told you. Yeah, it could have been. Know, winter, it would have been better if it was Winter because then Winter could have said something along the lines of, "I have my hands tied." But then exactly. they can still have an actual just scene with doing her. Doing her job. Yeah. It's like I have to. Like, like we can't directly yeah, contact Ironwood. I have to like send a ship to get permission. Yeah, exactly. It would have been very in character for Winter to say, "I'm sorry. I need to send a message to Ironwood." And with communications as spotty as they are right now, that could take up to two weeks, and we like to get there and back. And so, but I'll send it, and I'll try to figure things out for you, Weiss. But unfortunately, I can't. You know do any uh but unfortunately my hands are tied that's all i can do right now and it would have been a lot less cringy it would have made a lot more sense so yeah there's no reason for this woman to exist there's no reason for it to have not been winter it would have made a whole lot more sense i don't know i guess well in fairness one, we can't say for yeah. sure that there's no reason because they might have something okay, planned that's for true. winter winter but, might be doing something important but, but yeah at this point it's like otherwise i agree with you entirely like we all thought it was going to be winter yeah. because it makes yeah. sense for it to be winter not because and because we want winter like every I, most people like winter there's no yeah, good reason I, to not give us more of a character or... that people want to see more this, of this is something that like again they talked about in ruby rewind that they might do it it will piss me the hell off is if winter shows up and basically fixes everything like fixes cordovan and stuff like that is all like why the hell didn't you just let them through of course you were yeah. allowed to let them through we're not psychos and stuff like that if like that's winter's whole thing when she show like when she shows up is just to basically slap this woman aside it's all like Fuck this. But anyway. Which is like, I'm double, double super secret yeah. squirrel specialist. I outrank you. Yeah, something yeah, like that. So yeah. Her. So yeah, this entire beginning part, it was completely pointless. It was totally stupid. But yeah, then we really... have 
like the middle the, part, which is the other thing too, which I want to bring up too, is how they're like she looks over to Blake, and it's like at other questionable characters. It's like, oh, and then boy, I'm like, we well, here's the thing though, with that is that's a problem oh. actually, because if other people know that Blake is a problem, how did they not know Blake was a problem in Volume One? Well, yeah, I, they, pretty... I have an answer in defense of that little moment. It's because she's being racist, but yeah. Uh, well, one, just racism. Okay. Two, her eyes actually dart between Blake and Yang. Okay. Okay. So. And okay. Yang, then that's fair. All the right. person who that could broke Mercury's leg and put everyone on. Edge yeah, to that's begin fair too. The... But again, that could have been Winter. The one it could been the one actually at Yang yes. and saying, we can't. Unfortunately, some of you are not in best standing, right? If she was all yeah. like, look, Weiss, you can come through and stuff like that, but some of your friends are not in great standing right now and kind of gestures at Yay. Also, that would be a great freezer burn moment if that's where Weiss is yeah. all like, what's that supposed to be? <laughs> I do I like mean, that. Well, here's the thing, I, also like that. The, the like, one good part of that scene. But again, that would feel like Winter just doing her job and following yeah. protocol. The one good part of that scene for me, the actually good part of the scene, because I did giggle at Yang's comment, but that's only because she was, it's like, a, I, I don't even know if they, spot on. I don't even know if they realized how much of a joke that was, because it's like she's speaking like, for, the, I, well for the entire Stop. scene, for the entire fucking scene. Yeah. Um, but, the one part I did like was that was Weiss being the one to say what is that supposed to mean? I think that's a good again touch. just Weiss progressing and As yeah, the best Weiss fucking has come a very far way to stepping up and defending her friends. And, Not just yeah. best girl, best character in the entire show. Let's good be honest Weiss. here. Let's just Maybe, be honest. Yeah. Ruby's getting there. She's, she's actually getting a good. Of, she's getting better, but let's be honest, she's definitely still Weiss. It's definitely still nice, <laughs> especially, yeah. especially with 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 Renora still kind of like Renora still being kind of a shell of her former self, and Ren still hasn't fully recovered from his terribleness in Volume Five. Yeah, it's definitely, and I love yeah. them so much, but I can't deny that. It's that was something I forgot nice. to mention from last episode, but yeah. Um, but so we, but yeah, and so then we get Team Junior's is... reaction to Ozpin sucking at multiple lives, which. Was very good. And that like, was good. That so. scene is good. That's see, that's why I don't think this episode is like that bad, because yeah. I feel like that scene went well, and it is what they should have done. Like I can't think of a way I really would have written that specific scene that much better. To be perfectly honest, yeah. it was well and executed. Like, they were. Jean was angry. I like his emotions there, but he didn't go overboard, and it's not like leading toward like emo angry angsty Jean that's good because we don't want that or Jean. like unnecessary violence yeah like, that's it, dumb yeah but it's good that he's angry and I'm glad he's questioning things I'm glad he's even questioning Oscar that does make sense I'm glad that Nor is yeah, just as mad very good questions that he yeah. asked about Oscar and stuff I like love that. Nor's but reaction really... my favorite part of that scene wasn't even Jean because like we kind of knew that was coming and I'm glad I'm glad that can, the trailers can are now seeming to be fairly truthful I like that um, yeah. And I like that John was angry, but I liked even more that Nora was like also mad too. Like, I don't know. Like that was great. She just marched upstairs. I like that Ren's still mad, but not he's still in character. All of that was very well handled. Yeah. And so that scene, there's not that much to say yeah. about that scene. I mean, regardless of what well. happens to Oscar, like he doesn't really deserve. I don't know. I'll talk. Like this has me. I mean, this has like, me thinking about, about like where the they're going. Is. I, the, like the this volume. But yeah, I, but it is one of those things where it's like, Oscar didn't really deserve this, but I don't really give a shit about Oscar, so I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> if they had I done mean, a better I, job I, making us care about him. That's kind of mean, but like, but like, you know, Jean comes to, him, comes to himself. I like that Ruby is the one that calms, is the only one that can calm him down in that situation. But yeah, like Jean get, you know, asked some pretty good questions about what's going on with Oscar and... Yeah, Oscar didn't really deserve it, but Jean's anger is still understandable. You can still understand yeah. that, like, he's angry, and he's doing what angry people do, which is lash out. Like, yeah. that's a very human thing, and he's got good, pretty good reason to be pissed right now. So. Boy, howdy does yeah. he. So, yeah, so I thought that was a They all good... do. They all do, and I'm glad... Yeah. I'm glad the show's being consistent with everybody saying, you know, Ospin's a fucking idiot. Like, literally yeah. everybody who has heard about Ospin's bullshit that has known Ospin oh, previously. Oh, and also Crow's, 
Also, Crow's off getting wasted again because... Oh, that was really the best part. Really that's having not a bad time. Like, that, that's not functioning at all. That was he the best part of the first scene. Anymore. That was actually the best part of the first scene. That was great, like, seeing how, like, Crow react to that see, and see, Ruby's still it, trying to help. Crow's yeah, just, seeing Ruby trying to plead with them. Is, yeah, that I was really actually like, the best uh, part. I really like uh, later when she's trying to call him and he's not answering and she pretty yeah. throws her squirt. Um that's what I'm saying. Like, like you gotta yeah. think about it. You're this gonna... episode is not that bad. Yeah, the first scene is terrible, but it's got it's, it's got little it's, golden nuggets. Yeah, of goodness it's got it. golden Just... nuggets of good things. Which, let's be honest, the first four, the first five volumes, all of their bad episodes, the worst episodes had nothing good. Yeah. I'm just saying, for Ruby, I'm not saying like this bad episode yeah. is decent for like by Avatar: The Last Airbender standards. Because <laughs> Avatar's worry. worst episodes are still yeah. better than Ruby's medium episodes, yeah. but I'm just saying about for Ruby, for Ruby, there's still things that are good for the show and the story. Like this, the, I would put it this way: the, this episode not isn't great, but it doesn't hasn't, in my opinion, doesn't really do much to make the show worse. Because the bad parts are just kind of dumb shit on the side. Yeah, so, I don't think it's makes. I don't uh, think I, the beating he team makes that much of a difference. Bring up after you're I, done, well, dude. I think media's got something to say, and then sure. I'll talk. Yeah. Um, I have an issue with the whole hopelessness over. Uh, if we can't kill Salem, how are we supposed to beat her? Like, you realize you don't have to kill the bad guy, right? <laughs> Well, I no, think that is true. okay. My response that real I, mean, quick, I feel like that's maybe what's what they're going to come that, like that's that's exactly totally the conclusion they're going to come to. Exactly, that's what I yeah. think they're doing. This is because I think the point is that everybody keeps saying, "Well, if we can't kill Salem, what do we do? If we can't kill Salem, what do we do?" Because I've been saying this. I'm obviously I'm not the only one who's been Wait. saying this. As soon as they found out about Salem, I said, "Well, the solution." I immediately thought the solution is we're not. They're not going to try to kill her. Eventually, it's like Ruby's yeah. going to talk to her. So I think that's what they're doing. Is they're still leading on the that's idea kind of, of killing. Salem. And they kind of and they've been setting that up since like volume one and stuff. That there will be yeah. no. Well, I, I think and I, I said and I said this. Yeah. I said this in uh, the podcast for uh, the third episode when that first came out. Uh, the fact that Salem can't be killed actually fixes some of the problems with Ozpin from earlier. Not all of them. Yeah. Nowhere near. Not even like a quarter of the problems. But yeah. it does fix one massive problem, which was if Salem could be killed, why didn't Ozpin kill her when he yeah. had literally all the relics and the maidens and the headmasters and an entire army of huntsmen and the support of all the kingdoms? And that is just yeah. yeah, it's like this is why because she can't die and if he gets all the relics together then the gods are going to be pissed <laughs> the the gods will probably destroy the world honestly that's probably what salem wants so we'll just be playing into salem's hands yeah yeah, so yeah we'll, that we'll, was really good which, whichever character brings that up will become my new favorite character even if it's like <laughs> someone i previously despise oscar like, uh, like, really like, like, no like blake like like blake like blake brings okay. up like, like wait if Salem could be killed, then wouldn't we be mad at Ozpin for not doing it sooner? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think <laughs> that's why I think Blake, I don't have as much uh, of a. Mark my words. If Blake is the one to say that she, I will, she will be on my good side. <laughs> you want to? Yeah. No, no. You have to set her as your avatar for like a month. <laughs> that's a good deal. That's a good deal. Yeah. So that was a good thing. It doesn't fix everything wrong with Ozpin and. So yeah, I but, mean, but, like, but here's here's my big but, question so, too. Right now is uh, is this is like and like this is like my fear with like the starting of the Oscar retrieval arc is, is it feels like the, him? no 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 I'm not or worried about being Ozpin? I'm not throwing re redemption or anything like that. I'm just worried that the show won't be able to find its gear because right now like the the stick shift is in neutral and it's just sitting there bouncing around. As they're like coasting towards a turn. No, it's not even there. Know. It's 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 going back and forth between first and reverse, and they're trying to like do a sixteen point turn out of a small parking lot. And we don't yeah, know if they're actually yeah. going to make it out of that parking lot. And they've stalled a few times in the process. Exactly, they're not that good of a driver. Um. So yeah. like that's what I'm worried about. Like like this next episode, whatever we get it after Christmas. Also, Merry Christmas like has to like shove the it, like the gear the, it has they have to find a gear by the next episode 
Yeah, they or, need to like, just go. Yeah they, yeah, they just need to go. Like, they need to, like, find the momentum that they had for the first half of this volume. To and give, they just start going To again. give credit, that's, that's, I, yeah. I actually think they're going to find Oscar in the very next episode. And by finding him, they're going to find something else important that gets them to their next point. I really think it's actually going to be that quick. Yeah. I think that's why Ospin so, left, Oscar left. Like who? Like who knows? Like Oscar could have just ran away to try to like find someone. To, either either like, they're gonna find him, out. or they're gonna find something by finding him, or they're gonna find something without finding him that gets them to Atlas. I really think that's what they're doing. I think that actually would yeah. make sense, and that would make this episode a little bit better um, by by comparison. But you know, by yeah, if it's not just. Yeah, if it's not just yeah. an Oscar pity fest. I'm not saying it's like going to be a great episode. Moving things forward. Because uh, the first scene is terrible, and I actually don't love the last scene either. I don't love the Maria and Ruby scene. It's it's yeah. too much. Yeah, of, I, 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 I have, have some issues. I have moving, some issues with moving well. on to that, because it's basically yeah. the middle part of the scene is the middle part of the episode is the is the best part of the episode, and it's done well. I don't think we're arguing that. It's the last the last part. I think we could might have some disagreement on because. For Some, me, yeah. I liked it kind of a bit the first time, and I liked it less the second time because it's a lot. It's a lot about Maria, and I do like Maria, but part of it is it's kind of like Jean Semblance. We're finally hearing about Silver Eyes, and it's taken so fucking long that who gives a shit anymore? And <laughs> no really, one cares. And, and, the fact and that... we haven't learned jack shit really. She didn't yes. actually tell us anything that's what i realized the second time through it's a nice scene between the two of them they have a good chemistry together it's you know it's fine i get it i like i I like the motherly mentor role that she has i like her she took the words right out of my she's she's doing it well but we didn't we didn't didn't learn anything new and let's be honest basically we're not going to learn anything new that's the worst part of this scene is that that is kind of what it essentially feels like. she's, like, she's just gonna teach her how to kind of harness like the ability it's it's like the patron it's the patronus except for the patronus was an entirely new thing when you hear about it here it was yeah. we already knew that it was like a trigger a mechanism like for defense because she already did it whereas the patronus you had to learn how to do it it's, well the thing about that is uh, it's literally the patronus except for we already got the teaser of how we're how, of what it kind of is and maria's not going to tell us anything new it's just kind of refining how ruby's gonna you know expecto fucking patronum you know whereas in harry potter you learn about the patronus and then you have to figure out how to do it and also it's even harder because um you have to think of a happy thought while something that's trying to drain all the happy thoughts is to attacking literally, you. literally yeah. suck yeah. the soul that's, out of your body that's fucking shot. difficult whereas this is Oh, you know, something's attacking my friends, and I have to think of my friends and protecting them. Well, that's literally what's Which on your fucking like, mind. Yeah, that's so, pretty much Ruby default mode. Yeah, yeah. it's default oh, Ruby also, mode. Also, uh, yes, sock. Go ahead. Well, sock. the thing was like, as it's more uh, on the lines of like, you know, like there was a bunch of hints and stuff like that about like the Silver Eyes being the uh, God of Light related. Which would also yeah. put into fact of why the Silver Eyes kind of worked against Cinder because remember, magic was the gift to man was his gift to mankind, the God of Darkness. It was kind of uh, yeah, it does, it does, not really. It does, I feel like this was a clarification. In, it, does feed, I do, it does feed into my um my theory that Silver Eyes are anti magic in general. Yeah. yeah, because Maria Maria even says that she doesn't know. Uh, Maria says that she doesn't even know everything about the Silver Eyes. Neither did her father. She never encountered a maiden. Uh... She never encountered anything magic based except for the Grim. All right. Why, why does Robert disagree? I'm curious. I feel like I don't know. I feel like they were this pretty definitively stated that it only affects the Grim because Ruby doesn't know that. Because keep in mind, Ruby does not know that Cinder has. Like gained her abilities but it also, because it, of the Grim. It's not just, she does. She doesn't know that it not only did it work on her at Haven, it worked on her at Beacon as well before she even yeah. had the Grim one. That's she had, except it, for the Grim that she used to drain. Except for the Grim that she used to take the power. No that was at Haven. That was at Haven. No, she was. She didn't have it. No. In. No. 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 no, no, no. He, from... He's talking about. He's talking about to get the maiden powers to begin with. Yeah, she used the Grim yeah, to get the maiden powers in the beginning. There, there's, 
there's no evidence to suggest that that bug was even still her, inside her. Except for the yeah. fact that she still had the. I I had still. I, I have to pretty admit pretty certain that that she always had the grim. Power. I had to admit so that that, that, I, yeah, that is the grim in her that's being affected because she says you know maybe there's something you didn't see. Ruby doesn't know that how Cinder got the power yeah. and all that, so. I'm still thinking that it only affects Grimm because the God of Light also, I don't know. I, I'm also so, not buying the whole thing so about this is, like this is magic my humble opinion. affecting so, of this is, only this being is given by the God of Darkness. This is my humble opinion as it is of right now. So whenever Ruby initially did the eye blast, we're going to bust out the trusty old anime trope of I unlocked a new power and I went berserk and I don't remember it. And that's how Salem lost her, I mean Cinder lost her arm was she was stunned by the light mm, and no, that question I'm actually lost the armor definitely process. disagreeing with that um then so here's the oh this is, okay I, I will say this to you this is another thing that I liked about this where like Mario is like well maybe you didn't see maybe you just didn't see something you're supposed to which is kind of funny coming from the lady with with uh with woke goggles <laughs> on um so there is that, which I have a feeling like that's going to be the reveal because it seems like there's there's two like reveals that are going to be like w which we've kind of gotten one reveal, which is the silver eyes. And then the second reveal, which we as the audience knows and then like, but only, you know, the bad guys know about, which is Cinder's arm. So like that's that's the other thing, too. And I feel like those are the two big reveals. It's so. Yeah, there's that. Okay, I'm off my. my so I, also, I had yeah. to admit. But also, there's, they make the point of showing that you know the god of, you know, had silver eyes. He's the source of the silver eyes. He obliterates the Grim, but his brother, the god of darkness, who you guys are implying is, you know, you guys are saying that anything related he, to he, him he is fl what is affected by it. He flinched, but he's still, you know, getting well, like still, arguing like, super with powerful. his brother and getting like, all up in like... his real life, getting confrontation. He's just and ready to fight. Just, All right, hold he's on. He's just as powerful as his as his brother, and he's a god as well. So like, yeah, he flinched, and it's not like the the god of light has magical power. Has the would even have the ability to just nuke his brother in a single blast, no matter like how it works. You get punched hard enough, I, okay, you're gonna flinch. So, so here, I'm fine here's with either one. Here's, here's, here's the thing. So I, 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 have, I have issues with this though. Okay. I appreciate that they cut to that scene from the third episode. I appreciate mm -hmm. that they gave us that little recap. Be like, ah, CC, this is what we were going for with that because they needed to. And the fact yeah. that they needed to bugs me. Okay. The God of Light's eyes are not silver. They are white. <laughs> yeah. They're they are pure them. white. <laughs> uh, well, the, light, the light that they that produce is kind of like something to think. That blast of energy did not turn the Grim to stone. It evaporated them. So yeah. when that scene came out, when, when you first see it, when you see it as a, in, in movie form on the Blu-ray or whatever, uh, it's going to look like the God of Light just used a beam of, just used a, an energy blast, just a raw power energy yeah. blast. Dr. Octagonopus, blah! Yeah, yeah, he he did uh he did uh the the Vegeta's final. I'm attack. a fire in my laser. Yeah, I'm a uh, fire in my uh, laser. Yeah. Uh, it's not going. It doesn't really translate to this being set up for the Silver Eyes until they re until they purposely recontextualize it by cutting back to it. Yeah. Uh, so like again, I appreciate it. I appreciate that's what they're going for. But that's not what they were going for. They should, uh, that, that feels yeah. like that feels like yeah. something that when they were writing, like maybe a bit episode, of a rest time. That when they were writing this episode, they were like, "Well, we kind of already had the idea that the Silver Eyes come from the God of Light and the Groom come from the God God of Dark. We didn't really put anything to hint at that, so let's kind of shoehorn this little detail in, I, and yeah. then cut and then cut back to it. I I I just say. I usually do agree with Robert on most things. I actually agree with Media and Sock on this one, though. I do think... Because, uh, see, here's the thing. Robert's thing makes more sense if you think about it from the beginning. I think Robert's... Yeah, like, I'm, I, I I'm think, fine with it if it happens. I, but, I like, think I Robert's like, still... Th I think... I, I could be wrong, but I think Robert's just thinking about it still, like, from a logical perspective. Whereas, like, I think Media and Sock's thing just makes fun of, like... Or, not makes fun of. 
makes more sense in terms of like what these writers would actually do i I, that's what i Mm -hmm. think it is i agree that like robert if i was writing it i would do it the way you you're doing it you know what i mean but we don't know yet either way so i mean i think i think it's it's time to me not move to move on anyway because like we don't know this yet i get i can understand like like at uh in 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 ruby on uh and the other thing is this could change the civil rights never affected since they they, they could they could be they could be inconsistent with this anyways guys like we could not even really know what the civil rights actually affect because they're so fucking inconsistent with shit They've already yeah, changed. Listen, they've already yeah, changed. If it, happens, if it happens like Robert says, then I'm I'm okay with it. Yeah, it's I, not really I, that I'm big kind of, of a on deal. This train right now. Yeah, it's not really yeah, that big of a fair, deal. To be fair, one thing I will say is that this does add a bit of credence to the idea that um, Silver Eyes are descendants of like Ozpin's reincarnations, because he is specific. Because you know his reincarnation is a direct result of the God, the God of Light. Light. You know, the God of Light is the one who keeps bringing him back and reincarnating him. So that, you know, it is pop- so that idea that, you know, he keeps some of his residual magic from those past lives when he's reincarnated could also be the result of, you know, the Silver Eyes and stuff. I mean, it could also lend credence to why uh, Sale wants all the Silver Eyes dead because Osmond's essentially cheating on her at this point. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, they can't hurt her or anything like that. She just wants them all dead because they're. Because I mean, I think, I think we all thought that just no one put it. No one, straight no one up put Hera it on all yet. of Ozpin's kids. That's what it is. He's I going straight like... up Hera. Just... <laughs> yeah. Big brains, big brains. She's going all Hera on your asses. Uh-oh, That's like a 200 IQ thought right there, guys. Like, I don't want to get one of those out every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, think, yeah I think, dude, uh, no, I think uh, he's going to the bathroom or something. I, I heard oh. him shuffling oh, okay. on his mic. Um, anyway, so, yeah. So, uh, question. Has anyone yeah. done the Dormammu I've come to bargain with Ozma yet? With, like, him being brought back over yeah. and over again? Yeah. yeah. I don't think so, no. No. I'm gonna have no. to... I'm gonna My have favorite to... one of those is I'll the one, is the one from uh, Moana. Tosses her in the water, she splashes back on. I have come, come to bargain. <laughs> bargain. <laughs> yeah. Over and over again. That was funny. Yeah. I, or yeah, there was something else you were talking about, Media... Or yeah, in the comments, which was so Maria talks about how uh, she, you know, was number one in getting the license exam. Yes. You know, license I have, exam. I, with so, that. I feel like this rate. So I feel like that's like that. It's kind of also. I don't know. This is very similar to a very real world question, which is why do we go? To, why do kids go to college when they can just go right into the job world and, you know get what and like get on the job training and part of the and like for some jobs this is not the same like for teaching and stuff like that it makes sense that you would get it want a degree to teach and stuff like that but like and like this is something i would but like this is also something i would like i don't know i I almost wanted coop to be on today so i could ask him about like although i'm pretty sure i know what his attitude would be which would be like the pros and cons of people who go to like um well, yeah, who, for pe- of people who, like, go to ROTC programs in college and stuff like that and get, tra- like, specialized training there versus people who just go straight to boot camp and, you know, go straight into the into the field and stuff like that. Like, ROTC, ask if he can all, all ROTC on those is, is just, is just but, getting your eagle before you, before you, uh, as, as a Boy Scout. Yeah. But, like, my, but, so, like, my, I don't know, my headcanon for it is that the academies are a slower but also a safer way for the students to learn while the while like go, just going straight into the field is a faster and, but more dangerous version unfortunately team ranger was still need apparently needed training after like after their whole trip even though crow said like you know a day out there is like a, is like a week in here so that kind of goes out the window and like they, yeah, i don't they think it really, goes out the window i don't think it goes out the window I think they keep making the academies feel more and more pointless. Well, I mean, Blake got in; she didn't go to any academies. Well, and well been... I'm a tradie, so fuck Maybe. universities. I I, uh, <laughs> that's my humble opinion. Here's the thing. Yeah, I, I do think they're to some degree you're right, but I think, I think it's not entirely. Uh, I think it, they, I think in concept they make sense. They it would have been better if they had done a better job explaining like what, you know, showing what more experienced huntsmen do 
I do think there is some credence to it, though, because, well, they, you know, they explain that Crow is really great, but then they don't show him doing as much great stuff as he's supposed to, really. And yeah. Ironwood, although Ironwood's pretty amazing, actually. So Ironwood <laughs> kind of proves that. I think the Winter versus Crow scene helps that, but I agree that it's kind of sad when the thing that proves the power of being in school longer the most is coffee. That's not a good thing. Yeah, no. So, yeah, the more I talk about this, the more I realize you're kind of right that it does. <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind. Hey, 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 I, had, like, I had to talk it out because I wasn't here during, like, the okay. first part of this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, Never mind, Robert. Here. Never mind, Robert. You're completely right. The academies are fucking pointless. <laughs> Yeah, it erases the age-old question. They should be. They should be, of, they should be would, though. But they are. But they. They. They didn't. They. It, yeah. 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 It, it raises the age-old question of why would anyone go to these schools? Yeah. Still. Yeah. We still like, have that like, question. If you could, if you could yeah. get like homeschooled, and with enough talent and and training, you can outclass like the everyone from that year. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, yeah. fully trained huntsmen include jokers like freaking D and Dudley from earlier in this yeah. volume. Yeah. The sad what thing. Do they, what do the what do the academies actually teach? The sad thing about this is that they're not even trying to make a statement on the ca academies being pointless. That's the worst part. Yeah. It would be <laughs> fine if that's what they were going for. But they're not going. They're not going <laughs> for that. Not. That's yeah. that's no, the worst no, part. No, they, they, were, they were going they were going for Maria's just that cool, yo. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much the rule of cool and all that, and it's all like. Uh, you didn't really think it's gonna like, you? Like, the, there's there's exceptions like uh, Pira, for instance. I, I I've said this numerous times. I think Pira, true, yeah. I think Pira was Huntsman level, and she only went to the academies to make friends within her chosen profession. Like, yeah. she could have easily just yeah. showed up yeah. on the last day. And that's and another thing that you can say, like, this is why you go to... Didn't want to. Yeah, and that's something else they could have said here, you know? Mar and, like, maybe an argument for the Academy is that Maria was all alone. Maybe if she'd had a team, you know, had a backup, she wouldn't, you know, she would have had someone to help True. her, and she wouldn't have she lost her eyes. She could have had a hot... They don't. Just, they're not saying like, any of that, you know? Just actually made me like this a little bit more by saying that. Just, I, I, you actually <laughs> like the detail a little yeah. bit more. Like, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like a networking thing, but yeah, they're not really, but yeah, they're not really thinking about this. They're not, about this. yeah, and so that's kind of an irritating thing there. But yeah. yeah, another, another age old question is like, why do, why are they trained in teams if they all go solo? At, that's at the worst part. That actually bothers me yeah. even more. Because, because here's the yeah. thing, yeah. The, the academies could make a lot more sense if they all stayed in teams afterwards. Because then, or at least yeah. like duos then, or trios then, or something. But all we see because is then even if because yeah. well no it still makes more sense most senses for at least four or eight. But it, yeah. the thing but is, we it, see Stark uh, having all gone their separate ways and stuff like that. And who knows? Maybe that I don't know. Maybe that could have been like their like see, I don't know. Maybe I feel Stark like it would have been like, fine. Like, freaking, uh, like like yeah, I think it would have been fine if Stark was an exception. Yeah, that would have been well, fine even, because even of the. Broad like, to be fair, maybe D and Dudley were partners in the academies, but yeah, they all went I mean, down. They both went down like work. scrubs. So yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and like uh, Team Stark, I don't think really fell apart until long after they had graduated. Like yeah, until Ty, Crow Summer, got Ty Summer, yeah, and... Ty Summer and Crow stayed together until the. I mean, Ty and Crow are still together. Summer's dead. Raven's the only one who actually left. Uh, so that's actually like. Well, Crow's uh, still keep going on a bunch of. It would still, it would still be the academies. Like, that's because that's, but like they're still in contact, after, they're still good friends. The academies after, would make so much after more Raven, sense. But that's after Raven left and Summer died. The I academies would make so much more sense if all they said was that the, that they do stay together as teams afterwards. Because even if, even yeah. if they don't do that great of a job at training people, which I know they're supposed to, but they're not. It's the show's own dumb fault for not sh proving that. It would be better if yeah. if they stayed as teams because at least you're better fighting in groups. So at least that makes some yeah. level of sense. Yeah, uh, John, I think John, this is another one of the big pros of college. You know, you you make relationships, you yeah. network. It's an opportunity for networking and having people that you can call up that can help you get jobs in the future. So yeah, yeah, that guy that you had your pants down with, or getting spanked at the frat by the guy in charge of the frat house. Next thing you know, he's like middle manager at some company. He gives you a sick job, and you bonded over that. It was kind of homoerotic, but I mean, hey, it got you the job, so it's no big deal. 
Uh, that is why I was never in a fraternity. And that's why I also anyway. was ne- I also was never in a fraternity. Yeah. I'm not in anyway, a fraternity but, because they cost money. But uh Fair enough. Uh, I'm not in a fraternity because I like, didn't go to college. I'm just <sighs> stuck in community college as a go. tradie. Yeah. yeah. Uh but but like uh the jobber okay. dude from volume four who got uh who got wiped out in Sheon Village, he might have survived had he stayed with his team. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, he didn't know. pass and this would the hazy be the like that. House you know, they could be using with. this to like, you know, build the theme of you know teamwork and how important that is. But they haven't really done that. So, yeah, it could. It's one of those things that like this could work. This is one of the like it does, but it just feels kind of like a mess. And yeah, it raises that question of, you know, why do they need? Why did they even go to Beacon in the first place? And like, I don't know. I guess the answer is still to meet each other as a team, but that's like not really the reason within the universe. So uh, I think that's a question for someone to ask them at an RTX be like, hey, I know you you could expect me to ask a spoiler question or something like that, but uh yeah. just one minor detail that's something needs to be asked. <laughs> it's like why? I mean, sure, like, I guess I understand, like, that they all, like, they're four different individuals. So, like, unless you were, like, you're literally, like, shipping people together and, like, throwing them into a team and, like, work it out uh, mm-hmm. so they potentially pair up. It's, like, I can understand, I can understand, like, duos, but, like, four people with four, in, like, four separate lives who may be raising, fam- may or may not be raising families at a young age because humanity's kind of fucked at the moment. <laughs> like, that's... It's kind of a key thing. It's like, yeah. Sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, was there anything else with this episode? Or, uh, uh, I think that was the big thing. Ah, uh, well, should we talk a little bit about Ruby Rewind? Because uh, no, I, they, they they explained some I, things from uh, the the previous two episodes. What are they uh, explain? Oh, the, uh, the Miles questionnaire thing, too, or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so this week on Ruby Rewind, Miles, Miles was, was the, the guest. guest star. Yeah, the guest. Uh, and, yeah. And, so, and so a lot oh, more yeah, people watched, a lot more people paid attention, a lot more people took <laughs> notes because uh, Miles is one I of the lead creators of the show. Yeah. And um, I really feel like it should well, just where, be Miles the, and Carrie like, every week. But... Where, where's the, yeah, where's the, like the previous week? Like last week it was Lindsay and... I love Lindsay to death and stuff, and I, I was saying this earlier, but uh, I wish, and I've said this numerous times, I wish Lindsay would uh, be added on as one of the writers because she has a really firm grasp of Ruby as a character, and yeah. it, it, it's it's a level of, like, a, it's a connection that I don't think any of the other actors and characters have in the show. Uh, just, just the level, like, I mean, they... that understanding that Lindsay has for Ruby. Uh, yeah. For, I mean, they've talked a little bit about. I mean, they've talked a little bit about how sometimes they like give her a little bit of creative freedom with her. They let well, her ad lib well, a few well, lines, yeah. but well, no, I do. No, but it does feel like they should give her. I don't know. No, her, no. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing about that. Yeah. Uh, Lindsay has enough understanding about Ruby as a character to where she'll step up and be like, "No, Ruby wouldn't say that. No, Ruby wouldn't act this way." Uh, that's one of the reasons why she is a major reason why Ruby has never really acted out of character. Uh, yeah. Where, whereas, like on the other, on the opposite of the, of the spectrum, you get someone like uh, Aaron Zach, who will literally just read whatever lines they send her. Yeah. And, and do it all, it. And do it all in one take, and then that that's her performance. Uh, she, she, no questions asked. Uh, but because Lindsay is not part of the writing crew, um she doesn't always know what she's talking about when it comes to things that don't have to do with her actual characterization. Like, like the whole question that, of how old is Ruby right now? Yeah. Um, is she 17 anyway, or 16? But, yeah. Yeah. But, but Miles was on, on this week and uh, yeah. he, he gave some answers like uh, Maria's weapons are called life and death, which is a really freaking 
dumb <laughs> name. Uh, that does feel. It makes sense, right? The moment from what we understand of her character, though. Oh so God! What if, what if, uh, during the final confrontation, Ruby gets disarmed and Maria just throws life and or death, preferably life, at Ruby, and she's like, "Wacha!" And then back someone with Let's it. be honest; they're the same thing. It's at least it's better than calling <laughs> than like being super edgy and calling them death and more death. Well, I mean, it makes sense, because, like, uh, if you think about no, it... No, no, it should be, like, like it, it should be, it should go, like, full doom, and just be, like, rip and tear. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like, dude, correct me if I'm wrong or anything like that, but, like, it's, like, since her theme is, uh, Dios de los Muertos, you know, like, Day of the Dead, you have to, like, celebrate life and respect the dead or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I did. So, so it, make, it makes from, sense for, it makes sense for what she's been of, saying, and getting her, her weapons after it. It makes sense to me. It, it's like a of, there's a small part of me because I, I, like, I remember oh. that in that question there was a suggestion it would be that I thought was way. <laughs> well, what was the suggestion? suggestion? I don't remember, but it sounded really. Oh, good. You, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> there's a part of me that wants um that like because I was like whenever I saw Maria's death mask I'm like please, please Maria at the end of this volume just hand like Ruby the mask, and now I'm like well, it please was broken, Maria. Hand, hand her a little scythe so it's like just a secondary weapon that she could use. Wait, what if her canes? What if her canes just actually one of her full scythe? Oh no, I it bet money that is. It is. It's yeah. still got oh, the yeah. blade bits in it. It's still got the blade yeah. bits in it. Yeah, it still has the same What's design. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so she's yeah. just like, you thought it was a cane, okay. but it's also a gun. Like, well, you didn't notice that? <laughs> I noticed that as soon as the. As no, it wasn't a notice. It. Yeah, I don't know. I was more. Yeah. I didn't know it was it very it before it. this episode because you could still see yeah. the blade in it. Yeah. You could see so, it more clearly uh, this episode. Yeah. But anyway, what what I wanted to uh, point out, this is just me feeling vindicated of uh, some criticisms I've levied at the show before. Uh, <laughs> Miles admitted to writing the Jean Alper scene from Volume Five. Yep. With with Cinder. Yeah. <sighs> And I, you I, 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 you I, killed my uh, girlfriend. I don't know what these emotions are because I'm too much of a beta male to actually get a girlfriend. Yeah, I I, I tweeted about it. I was like, hey gang, remember when I say Jean was a self insert for Miles Luna, who couldn't help but project his own fragile ego onto the character, often to the detriment of the series. You get a comment, and you get a comment. Everyone gets a comment. <laughs> I, I, I just yeah. posted a bunch of comments I've gotten. I mean, to be uh, calling me like an idiot for for uh, saying that Jean is a self insert. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that, that, fair, most that scene are that scene some, was so bad. Most how characters could it, are in some way. A, that volume five is all around bad. Okay, that hate, scene was I so hate. bad. How could it be <laughs> anything other than what you suggested, media? Honestly. Yeah. yeah. That was so bad. But anyway, back to volume six, which this episode isn't great, but it's still a lot better than that shit. Yeah, I just I just wanted yeah, to mention that, that yeah, about uh, Ruby about Rewind. Some of the things that Miles uh, talked about. Yeah, um, yeah. There was something else that he talked about that I can't Mercury remember. Mercury has what a semblance. Like, you know that. Yeah. It's apparently, it's good. some sort of spoiler, but yeah. Yeah, yeah apparently, uh, stating the theme right now would be a spoiler for next episode. I, I'm going to go ahead and argue that that can some be true. Like, I don't know, I don't know if you read it, but like the example I used was Thor Ragnarok. It's about, like Thor Ragnarok is about Thor trying to prevent Ragnarok and the destruction of Asgard. The theme of Thor Ragnarok is, and pretty, and I'm sure everyone knew that going into it. The theme of, but the theme of Thor Ragnarok is accepting that there are things you can't change and that people are more important than things and places. That pretty much gives away the entire end of the movie right there. Asgard's gonna be destroyed and you're, and, well, yeah, Asgard's going to be destroyed, but the people are going to survive. Like, you know, so I, mean, I can see how, I can, I kind of see where he's coming from by saying that, but like, I, but at the same time, I would say that that's where like the narrative meat of the show needs to, you know, do its job and make the journey one worth taking. I and guess. that's where we get the great exploitable of I can't destroy you, but he can. <laughs> but but no. Can I just no. interrupt and say pancakes uh, for dinner is amazing? Yes. If fuck anybody uh, says otherwise. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, so uh, waffles. Excuse me. Come on. Waffles anyway. over pancakes. Sorry. Yes, I. Uh, <laughs> so so. They're both good. Here's here's an issue I have with that. Um. I'm someone who believes that 
uh, you shouldn't really write stories with themes in mind because it's really easy to turn whatever you're doing into propaganda at that point. Yeah. Uh, theme should be a natural byproduct of the story you're telling and characters growing. But if you have a certain theme in mind, you should probably state it up front so that people know what you're going for and can judge accordingly. It can, well, can they've judge done that. Accordingly. They've done that before, and people have just been bombasting them with the. That's what they because thought they haven't. That, that, that's because they haven't done it well before. <laughs> Like, like the whole keep moving forward is such a vague theme that uh it, yeah. that people can easily misconstrue it as uh anything that even remotely resembles progress is inherently a good thing uh but yeah. no that that doesn't just having the story uh, and stuff progress does not mean it's a good story volume five is the most happening volume yet and it was a disaster because they did not do anything well. Yeah. Keep moving forward is I... such a dumb thing, honestly, because it, it, I get from Monty's point of view when he said it, it makes sense because for him it's keep working, keep coming up with new ideas, keep doing stuff, and that's what gave him success. So keep improving. Don't, 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 keep improving don't, let, don't let life. Yeah. Don't let life get you down. Yeah. Uh, stay positive. Yeah. Stuff yeah. Like that. In that sense, it makes sense. But in the show, it doesn't make any sense. All it means is don't kill yourself is that really like the only message you have like don't, don't stop give up. don't yeah. give up completely which essentially for a hunts mean don't, means stop don't kill don't kill yourself don't die yeah. that's no fucking shit like never go back on your ninja way like that's like telling the military <laughs> like oh yeah don't shoot back at the enemy don't try like what the fuck it's like being Canadian. Uh, if don't they, say a. If they invade your country and uh, and you and you lose the war. That means you win. <laughs> Secures like someone talked bad about Canada. Re. We knew about it. <laughs> We've been yeah. like America's been doing that for years. Yeah, yeah Canada is hey, just America's hat. America Junior. Yeah. Hey, quick question for you guys. Just a uh, dis little discussion I'm having on the Discord. How, for those of you who have seen uh, Voltron: The Legendary Defender, would you call it a, would you call it the comedy? Um... I've only just started watching the new season. I'm only a few episodes in. I would say it leans on its comedy heavy during certain parts of the vol uh, of, the, okay. of its seasons. The last season was was the problem with the last season was all the episodes that were leading up to like to the final three episode arc that we had in that volume in that episode mm -hmm. in that season words was just filler for the last like four to three episodes and my problem with the last four to three episodes of the previous season was it's like oh no we're getting beat up and then they like power ranger style unlock like a new ability and then it's like, oh no, we're getting beat up even more. And then they unlock another ability and that allows them to win the day. So so um, I, I would I would have two questions in response to that. And I, I okay. have not seen Voltron. So okay. I'm asking these in earnest. Uh, does the story, does the overarching plot start off bad for the characters and have them work towards a happy end? That, that's my I would say question. yes. It starts off with them dealing with an evil empire and working towards uh, ultimately overcoming it. So yes. Okay. The, and so, at this so point my... in the story, the evil empire has collapsed, and a new power, which is a remnant of said old evil empire, is filling so they up bridged, the void. They bridged the Star Wars uh, original uh, trilogy yeah. and the Star Wars sequel trilogy together. Yes. That yes. sounds awful, that, that's, actually. That's, that's that sounds really bad. Kidding. Um, uh, well, the show was not as good finish. as it yeah. was when it started. But, so. No. So, so by strictest definition, it is a comedy, because that's actually the original definition of a comedy. There are two uh -huh. types of stories. Uh, stories that start off bad for the heroes, but then get good, and stories that start off good yeah. and then bad. Comedies and tragedy. Comedy and tragedy. Yeah, comedy and tragedy. Uh, but that's not what people equate to comedies now. Yeah. Uh, Hello, do Greeks. The jokes, do, do the jokes outweigh the feels? I would say yes. So, yeah. Then it's, a, then it's definitely a comedy. Yes. They have entire episode, like entire joke episodes. 
They had a shopping mall episode. Isn't Voltron like a mecha show? I've actually seen that one. I've actually seen that one. No, to speak about how much of a joke episode you could have in Voltron, they literally have a game show episode. I thought I thought Voltron was like a mecha like military. It is. It is. Well, the it is. It's both. It's okay. So it's an action comedy. That's a converse. Sorry, I did not mean to derail. No, that's fine. I I so I I like Voltron. I really do. The fuck. it's How do you do road. a military mecha comedy? Uh, you call it Genlock. Yeah, you call it Genlock. Yeah. But, uh... No, the... Genlock is a tragedy. I forgive or, Yeah, uh... Genlock is gonna be a tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. Or Sock, you call it... Is... Real quick, by the way, Sock, your your internet connection is getting sorry. really bad. You're, you're like, freezing a lot in the, in the, uh, sorry, in the video. Yeah. Just wanna let you know. Yeah. Or you call it... Oh, what was it? Um, Gurren Lagann. Ooh, I hated that show. Mad. I hated that show. That show was the most Oof. overrated anime I ever tried to watch. Oof, you're, you've just pissed off like. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. It was so I lost, overrated. I, lost, I hated I lost the last interest. half of it. It was, I don't know, parts of it were okay. Yeah. I, 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 lost it, was okay. I lost interest by the time I was done with episode three. I was like. Yeah, that's what happened with me. No, I think I watched like episode I'm, three or four I'm, and I was like, if I'm, I don't care if the rest of it is good. This is boring as shit. Nah, it's a one. It's a one season anime. If your first four episodes are bad, it's a bad show. Well, not even if okay. Even if it's not even okay, that might be an overstatement. If your first episode four episodes of bad are bad out of a one season anime, then I'm not gonna finish watching it. That's what I mean to say. It might be okay. It might be slightly redeemed by the end or redeemed by the end, but no, the the beginning is is not that good. It's not that interesting. Like the, the, the only reason why I would even keep watching it is because they have this drop dead gorgeous red headed waifu, like the the most over the top uh, red headed waifu in all of anime. But oh, yeah, I, know I just wanted to watch her. I can <laughs> just Me, go and I can... and watch compilations. <laughs> my my yeah, you don't need the full anime, show. So Media's red headed anime waifu is my brown space elf. And, uh, spoilers for, uh, the current season of Ultron, I don't care, so stop listening for the next 15 seconds. Uh, Lance and Alora kiss, and I'm like, nice. And I'm also impressed that they did that, because the shipping community for Voltron mm. is a special kind of autistic. Yeah. Special. I am glad that they did that. They actually, they actually, they actually stopped waifu baiting, and they actually, like, confirmed a ship. I'm curious though, because I haven't watched any further. If uh, if what's his name, if Keith is going to, or who's the uh, the wait, guy at the wait, start wait, the wait, wait, wait. They Keith. named a character Keith. Yep. Okay, I just suddenly lost any respect I had that's for that show problem. whatsoever. Wait. So what's the what's the name of the character? I think that's a pretty cool name. No, okay, Do you, here's the here's the thing. You don't live in Southern California, Robert. In Southern California. Uh, okay. Keith. Everyone's named Keith. Keith. And um, Skyler, and uh, yeah. what's what's the last? Well, Keith and Skyler. I don't respect anyone oh, named Oh, Chad, Skylar. Chad, 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 and Keith are always douchebags in Southern California. They're always the worst kind of loser high school quarterback. Does, does now, Chad to be fair, Keith's kind of a douchebag too. Yeah, Chad <laughs> wears a shirt. Is kind of a douchebag too. Okay, then, so, okay, then maybe it makes sense then. So okay, here's a question though too. Um, I don't know if how much you've watched, uh, Robert, but. Does the romantic tension between um, the Galra chick and the half Galra main character of Voltron person does that ever bear fruition at all? Isn't that because his mother? No, no, not his mother. The uh, the girl who used to work with Lotor and for some reason developed a crush on him. I guess he saved her life once. I hey, am not if you save a lady's before. life, I... you're entitled to her virginity. Okay. So say it Allah. So say it Allah. <laughs> High powered logic. <laughs> oh, we gonna touch that one? Straight, oh, out, straight out of Houston, Texas. Sure. I know I know part of how it ended. I've kind of I don't know. I've kind of given up on it by because <laughs> they I know how it ends. That's all oh, I'm anyway. still I'm still I'm still gonna watch it no matter what. Like I'm okay, eight uh, seasons in. Okay, I don't care. Go. But yeah, I'm not. In, I don't know. I don't know what happens between them. So I'm sorry. Okay. Um. So but anyway, back to Ruby. I'm sorry. That was no, a I mean, is there huge that... deviation. What, but what? Like, oh, speaking of, of Genlock, this is the thing that I kind of like got my hopes up with Genlock. 
is they're like steal your mech suits the nanobots are coming and then like this is the, this is a thing with me and mecha that i really like um if you've watched gundam thunderbolt uh no. one thing that they do really well in gundam thunderbolt is uh showcasing the pilots getting terribly killed inside their big metal mech suits oh, okay, so no. like the concept of like oh shit the nanobots are coming seal up your met suits is like oh no my seal's broken loud agonizing screeches as the nanobots invade your cockpit and just devour you so, so you people realize that the easiest way to kill to get through past the mech is to get to the pilot that's that is fine okay no so, that's so the one thing that i've always here's liked my problem. With my... here's my problem with uh with that uh teaser that we've gotten is the whole this isn't just a skirmish. The union is making its move. The union, because my evil capitalism. I know. <laughs> but uh, unions aren't capitalist. Well, they're actually socialist. Here's the thing. I thought union yeah, was a more yeah. was a more not... socialist thing. Just here's the thing. Oh, though. The here's, best, here's, here's the thing. The best here's part the thing. Too. No, no, no. Here's the thing, guys. We're gonna pod it very we're right. gonna podcast this show, and we're gonna rip yeah. it to shreds. Don't worry. No, I'm right. We're gonna have our time to rip it to shreds, and this time we're oh, getting right. in on the ground fucking floor, cause yeah, one one of two things are gonna happen. This show is gonna be so god awful that it's only gonna last a season or two, or it's gonna be so god awful it lasts ten seasons. Yeah. Yes. And there's an off chance that it might be passable, so who knows? Yeah, there's, hey, there's that if it is, great, because I expected Volume 6 of Ruby to be absolute trash fuck, and here we are, and I'm yeah. actually defending this episode. Because <laughs> the, fact this, the fact that this yeah. episode is so nothing that we're talking about Voltron and Genlock instead of Ruby, and we're only an hour and ten minutes into well, this podcast, I mean, this... means we have nothing oh, to say about this episode, but... It Is means we don't okay. have that much awful to say about it. I mean, the the, the thing is, it's this not episode great. Was only like, the the thing is, this episode was only like twelve minutes overall. Yeah, no, there's not that much that happened. Uh, yeah. yeah, we had so many really teasers everything. and shit that yeah. we were like three minutes in when 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 the actual episode fucking started. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I do kind of yeah. want to get into like the I don't know. I guess theories and stuff like that, like predictions, because well, that's what okay. I've been. Well, this week also. This week predictions the, the mean a good amount, yeah. yeah. The, the preview, I don't think, showed a whole lot. No, that's uh, what I'm saying. No, this week, the, it, the predictions... Very open it showed them preview. talking to Saffron, some pretty bad animation, like, yeah, of course. worse than Cinder yeah, jumping yeah, around on stuff. Compositing like, error, errors and stuff. Yeah. People I just, clipping but, through the buildings, people clipping through the trash cans because they're on the wrong yeah. layer. So I, take advantage of these two weeks, Rooster Teeth, because... That's bad. So I have to admit, it's nice that uh, but, it, it's kind of cool that we're doing the podcast after Ruby we Rewind comes out, just for the you know the information we get and yeah. the uh, trailer. It's nice. Mm -hmm. that, the yeah, added ship posting ability. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. added ship posting ability is fantastic. Yeah, and I do like that they've got um, that like I don't know the Saffron's kind of asking those same kind of similar questions to yeah. what um, like Team Ruby was being was asking themselves during the whole apathy thing which is you know why do we keep going what's even the point you know there's a, i don't know i feel like i'm i'm currently trying to figure out what exactly they're uh sorry what i mean that's the thing that's also, i'm is assuming that, like, they have like they haven't told saffron exactly what's going on. well they oh, should yeah, we're just helping crow with his yeah, I can, and I can understand why. Hey, sis, I'm going to fight in a more. I'm going to fight in a mortal witch. Probably gonna die. And also, like, we're humanity two point oh. Because as you yeah. know, I'm not actually that good at fighting, as you well know. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I was gonna say, I'm sure she knows that. Yeah. But like, he yeah, hasn't told her. You know, I'm going after the people that killed my partner and stuff like that. Like, and my kind of, sort of, not girlfriend thing that was one sided. Yeah. Maybe if I ha if like she had bothered to tell me that she had a I don't know if I weren't written to be kind of an idiot even though I'm actually supposed to be smart, but anyway, um, but I do like the you know so I'm assuming they're not telling her that but she's kind of like you know there are other missions there are other ways that you can do good it's all like we're kind of trying to do the ultimate good here but we don't know how to do the ultimate good so yeah, uh, so I do like that and so. Yeah, can I we, like that. Do we want to get in the, pr in the predictions then? Because I don't think there's much more to say about the base episode anymore, really. I, so, 
Yeah, let's. Okay. Yeah. Robert will finish, but let's. I feel like we can. There. I feel like there's like two or three end games that we can consider. Uh, I, I feel like this the they need to lay the groundwork for the end of the volume, like this next episode. Yeah. We know it's gonna be relate the uh, relay tower related thing. Like we know it's that's, that's the location of where everything's gonna go down. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Mine's pretty quick because what I'd like to see is I'd like to see. After Saffron walks away, I really want to see some sort of interaction between Junior about what's going on. And, yeah. you know, like about like, do I want to talk, see them talk at least for a little bit? And then hopefully either about they. Maybe she's right and like. Yeah. What, yeah. About what them. Are we doing? Or the either they or and either they just they stumble upon Osktard or it cuts over to Team Ruby who stumble upon Osktard. Either way. I'm yeah. assuming they're gonna find him, and they'll he'll end up being like harassed by the police or something, or or whatever the Mistral people, the uh, not Mistral, fucking Atlas people, and that's how they somehow find a way over there, or they run into Winter or some shit. I don't know, um, but I think either way, as I said before, they're probably gonna figure out the way to make it to Atlas this episode, even if they don't get there right away. They're gonna or at least stumble on. They're gonna start figuring out. Because I think that's the reason why Oscar is, that's why they got why they got Oscar to run away. I think it's mostly to, he's the going to be the thing that stumbles upon whatever it is that gets them to their next part of their journey. And and, and I'm then fine and with then like Oscar helping them like yeah that's fine the gap to, yeah that's like, fine fit. and and then and then so after so after they have the little conversation, Ren and Nora tell Sean to fuck off, and then they go make out. And that's <laughs> that's Maybe. really there we go. <laughs> Yeah. That's really all I By give a shit about because so... I don't think we're gonna get because obviously they've interrupted the Silver Eyes thing so I don't think we're gonna get much more right now and honestly I don't give a shit about the Silver Eyes much at all anymore. We already know Ruby's the main character. I think we didn't again we didn't learn anything new so Ruby's still the main character. She's still gonna use her Silver Eyes. She's still got the target on her back. Whoop de fucking do. <laughs> the one. Th By the way, yeah. one thing that would really annoy me if it did happen is, well. One thing that wouldn't be it wouldn't be bad if they run into Oscar and he's being her, and that's how they run into Cinder and what's their faces because that again could you know be a good fight and could trigger how they get over to Atlas. But what would be bad? I'm questioning what would be how bad? Her... What would be bad is if they kidnap Oscar. That would be so dumb because I don't give a shit. I don't care if Oscar gets kidnapped. I only care about oh, Oscar yeah. running away. They could do that Ooh. shit. On an Oscar rescue mission, yeah, hell no. Yeah, hell to oh. the fuck. Hell to the fuck to the goddamn to the no. Oh no, I could see it. Yeah, you can. You can <laughs> I see the terrible. See it in my mind's eye. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I need to fix this. Holy shit. Yeah, I need a drink too. I do not but... want that to happen. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Otherwise, it should be fine. So, if they just run into them and that's how they start fighting them, that's fine with me. Yeah. Because they're already there. We know they're supposed to be coming so, there. We know we're going to... We should be getting those fuckers before the end of the volume. Yeah. So... So, here's... So, I've I've, I've shot it over a few DMs to uh, Celtic Phoenix. I've also talked to him about what uh, dude and I have talked to about in private, which he seems down for. Nice. And the timing's better, too. Nice. So, I should be able to swing that. Um. Tomorrow. Noise. I mean, whatever I get paid this week, so we can get that taken care of. Um. So, I I've got two. So I I brought up the idea to him, which I've also brought up here on the podcast, which is mm -hmm. somehow basically word gets to Atlas that Weiss is in Argus, and then Winter's just like, watch this as she pulls rank on everyone. And then a large Atlesian force, because reasons, show up to Atlas to collect Weiss. And then a false flag happens, making Atlas looks bad. Uh, I messaged Celtic Phoenix about that. He thinks it's going to be a more smaller scale uh, conflict, which is perfectly reasonable. It makes sense, too. But like, well, the chances well, that both of those could happen are, are pretty reasonable. Here, and here's the thing. Kind of goes how, back how to, my, they... to what I said earlier that that would really just make Caroline very point. He, here's the thing. How would they get word? How, how would they get word to Atlas and have it reach Ironwood? 
before a crow's message does? Uh, Watt's relay tower. Like, why would Watt want that to happen, though? Well, maybe maybe he's, have... the one, he's the one who can take over Atlesian technology. Well, so, like, I, so I, I've, like, I've talked to this about security. Well, you know, I'm not does, saying he can't, have, but why would he gain, do that? What does Watts yeah. have to gain from bringing the Atlas military to Argus to collect Weiss? Well, the main you, point is to divide humanity for, for Salem's plan, so by that, making that's, Atlas seem like it's attacking of... Argus and maybe potentially uh, taking over the My Atlas actually attacks Argus. Like, if the ships actually attack Argus, and there's... there's, 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 there's like, destruction. They, wouldn't there's attack, some... they wouldn't attack it, though. They would just come over there with, like, a ship with, like, Winter and Ironwood, and be like, Weiss, we've come to take you home, or wink, wink, nudge, nudge, we're not actually going to take you home because Ironwood was totally against that in Volume 4, but whatever. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe he spreads, like, misinformation that, like, oh, hey, there's this big fleet that's coming in here they're taking over and then like riots break out or something but yeah, yeah i'm not except, really seeing it except like oh, the people in argus that this would actually affect would... you know what would be a no. funny joke with how uh yeah. oscar with how ozpin uh -huh. is able to convince ironwood that us that ozpin is inside oscar here's a funny thing of how they could convince that this is true is that Ozpin is like, um, I know that you and uh glinda used to be a thing and then ironwood's like I feel like that wasn't really a secret, though. Like, they shared a dance in the, like, the dance arc. I'm not sure if that's really a secret. I mean, them sharing a dance is like the one female uh, professor from Hogwarts dancing with the one Russian professor from that other Russian school in Hogwarts. Yeah, I guess that's kind of fair. So, which, by I the mean, way, which, uh, by uh, the way, <laughs> why the fuck did Victor... I still feel like that's something poor to do, like, what all. Hold on, no, real quick. But... This, is, this is really important. In Harry Potter... Why the fuck is Victor Crumb Bulgarian, but he goes to a Russian school in the far north where they gotta wear... Bulgaria is, like, so far south in Europe. Did like did, did J.K. Rowling not <laughs> know geography? Like, if well, he was... All if, I know this if he was Bulgarian Latvian, really if he was Latvian or, 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 um, Lithuanian, that would make sense. Or Finn, Finnish. But he's Bulgarian. Maybe I know, I know Europe Bulgaria is kind of close to Russia, Russia, Russia. Bulgaria is kind of close to Russia, but it doesn't make sense for him to go to school in Russia instead of like Greece, for example, or even Italy, or even Romania, or oh, even God, Ukraine. Such a all of those of a things right now. All of those things make well, Greece has been a meme since it began. Okay, let's be honest. Well, Greece is single-handedly <laughs> bankrupting the EU. It's hilarious. Oh, don't forget Merkel. Come on. Gotta yeah. give her some credit. Oh, too. yeah, I know. The, the Fourth Reich, which is basically yeah. the EU. Yeah, she's fucking up all over the place, so don't forget her. Um, uh, but, uh, <laughs> I mean... Anyway, uh, like, J.K. Rowling, like... Rowling really fucked up there, okay? That really so, didn't make like, any this, sense. This is my big question, too. It's like... It, it's what's the like I, i'm still trying to grasp at these at these straws here i wish i had like a bunch of straws that i could be holding on to it's like i'm literally grasping at straws right now <laughs> just keep it on your desk at all times. Okay. Yeah. well you um, won't be able to soon don't forget like starbucks and mcdonald's and all those places aren't gonna have straws in 2019 you didn't hear about uh, that yet i used Excellent. to work at a mcdonald's i was upset so i used to work at a mcdonald's as, as, as you would say high powered it's cosma aminals I mean, I could, uh, so as, as a hunter, like I, I am a big fan of conservation and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, straws are bad because they get stuck in sea turtles noses and they have to get pulled out. Yeah. That's literally the thing. But, it's literally the thing. But, um, like here's the thing though. Like I used to, I, I worked at McDonald's for like four years, uh, whenever I was yeah. in high school. And so pro like this is, this is not anymore, but this is how McDonald's in Texas where as a proper southerner and not one of those uh wussy new englanders like their sweet tea <laughs> where they add the sugar into it after it's been brewed um as a true southern as a true southerner from texas which used to be a country last time i checked how we yeah. do our sweet tea in mcdonald's how they used to do it was is we would brew it in a four gallon bucket and then we would take a four pound bag of diamond sugar a box cutter and we would slice it open 
and pour the whole four pound bag of sugar in it. That's a pound of sugar per gallon of sweet tea. That is real southerner sweet tea. Wait, by the way, that's do, how it's supposed to be. Do they even drink sweet tea that really much fun. in New England? No, no, no. They do drink sweet tea, but it's oh. not real sweet tea because the tea's already brewed and hot, and they're adding sweet tea in later. Well, that's proper southerner sweet tea. Is they brew the sweet tea, and as the sweet tea is brewing, they add the sugar in it while it's being brewed. Okay, well, that's proper proper su southerner sweet tea. Proper... Now I don't know what you liberals in California do for sweet tea. Hey, don't, sorry, dude. Don't call me a fucking liberal. I know you're not a liberal. <laughs> don't you but fucking... I'm generalizing all of California. I have to deal with y'all's transplants every day at the. Hey, I live in I live in Orange County. I live in one of the red counties. All right. Okay. Yeah. Lo just, just, uh, letting you know. <laughs> just letting you know. But, uh, I know. I so, know the rest of me is is in California, I, but I live I, I'm in... sorry. Um, but yeah, that's a real tangent. Um, that's just the thing, though. Like, I'm still trying. Like, because in Volume Five, we had an idea of what the end game was. Pretty like yeah. off the bat of like, okay, there's going to be a confrontation at the school yeah. over the relics. We don't know, like now. It's up in the air if they'll even make it to Atlas by the end of this volume. Like, I they, they'll be think they're still going in to. Argus. No, I think they're still going to. If they're not, I mean, that's going to be, be like disappointing. By the last episode, are they going to be in Atlas on the in the last episode? I think they're going to be ready to go to Atlas by the by the end of the episode, really? or, or at least arriving at Atlas in the last episode. Is my is that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking right they're now. gonna. I'm thinking they're gonna land in Atlas on the last episode. Okay. What I'd like to see, what I'd like to see, is they actually get to Atlas before the last episode, and then they fight with, um, what's their fucks in the last episode? Cinder, in Atlas. And, uh, in Atlas, though. You still have not seen Adam. I'm not sure. If yeah, that's I mean, he's got to come up soon. Like um, Adam's probably gonna. Yeah, they his keep ugly they keep head. teasing his Reaper My Chemical Romance ass, and when we haven't actually got any. I'm not. Of him. Yeah, it's like I'm not sure if that's necessarily a bad thing, but it is kind of like it's confusing because we we're expecting yeah. him. And again, as much as he's been nerfed and and fucked up to hell, like you do kind of need him because Cinder and Neo versus all of Team Everybody is not that a is not a threat. Yeah, that doesn't feel you like at a threat. least need Adam, and even then, it's kind of a stretch. Yeah. So, so, what do y'all think are the chances that, uh, like, Cinder will actively fuck up whatever plans that uh, Weiss well, they is going to make? They don't have plans Weiss right now. I mean, uh, Watts. Uh, what? I am not sure. I don't know. I really, I, it's fifty. That's I'm really not sure. Up in the I know we talked about this last week. It's less than fifty. Something I was kind of thinking about actually is maybe, or, because last week I talked about how I did, how I'm nervous about the idea. Cinder, you know, fucking up uh, Watts' plans because that would make her feel like a Zuko character. I feel like maybe it could work if the, if it makes her like kind of like Vegeta in, during the Namek saga, but not in the, but like not not the not with the eventual face turn and having a kid with someone type of thing. But like she's as much, but like she ends up being as much of a threat to the heroes as the villain. Well, like but she begrudgingly works with the heroes but at the same time she's still got her own thing and she's as much a threat to them as the others i don't know wait how would she work with the heroes though it doesn't make any that so no no they temporarily want the same thing and don't like they temporarily want the same thing and don't want you know one another to and they do and they don't want Watt to have whatever it is he's I, trying to i get. just don't i can't see I cinder ever so, working with with any i just can't see that so here's a question that uh, I, I just can't see them writing this, that this, well this, enough. Like there's, I can't this see this conversation came up. Yeah. So what if, what if the, the first like mini arc is like starts Watts's shenanigans, but then the second final arc is Cinder, Neo, and Adam. Assuming big assumptions here, comes in to like attack a quote unquote like re weaken Team Ranger and Team Ruby after they got done fending off whatever shenanigans Watts' pull. Assuming Watts is even like going they, to be a like thing they, this volume. Like they attempt to kill Steel? No, no, I feel like Cinder will fight referee after at the end of, like, Watts. Uh, fight refereeing is a is a term, especially in Battle Royale games, 
where if you are a squad and you're watching two other squads fight and then one squad wins and then as they're going to loot you kill the other squad while they are trying to loot that's called fight refereeing or in or uh, if you okay. play solo and escape from tarkov all you see two people, two groups fight, right, so and then what's the like the other group, the winning group's trying to pick up the pieces and get out of there. You swoop in and fight referee and kill the and kill the victors. I call it being a vulture and a viable strategy. Okay. But no, <laughs> like I, but on, like in all honesty, I think that could be the the scenario for the end of this volume is that Watts I shows up first to, and like tries to the bank cash ins, but yeah. Yeah, I, I that's honestly what I feel like. Like they go and cash be, in, basically. Yeah. So Watts is trying like like Watts fails, but then mm -hmm. Team Ruby in a wrestle it team team uh as Cinder, Adam, and Neo in the money ladder match for the mm -hmm. uh for the rights to the kid, like as like uh Team Ruby is showboating <laughs> We're still in the about background. That one. <laughs> as, as Team Ruby is showboating to the audience, like climb up the ladder and grab the the money in the bank and the rights to the kid, in the process, I feel that could potentially be the, like I honestly would be okay with, like Team okay. Ruby wins, but then they also like potentially lose the relic in the process or something along those lines. Or lose, I feel or that might be the thing that happens. Like that. Yeah. Ask that question or before maybe. you give it to them, though. <laughs> maybe yeah. I could I could see that happening. I yeah. could I could definitely see it too. Like they feel like they're not going to be able to keep the relic, so they like Ruby or someone burns the question as as a way to yeah. like deny the asset to them. Hmm. Maybe. Although I feel like that wouldn't completely burn the asset, but yeah, I see what you're talking about. Oh, hey, media. You well, I mean, they wouldn't, they wouldn't uh, get the. Like, depending on how long it's been. Like, I, is it, like, to get I guess it depends on how much Salem access. wants to question or. I don't know. From what I'm understanding, Salem's goal is get all the relics together. I don't know. My headcanon is still that Salem wants to get all the relics together while humanity is divided so that the gods destroy everything, including her. That's still my headcanon. Because then you could argue, too, that if they get the relic and the question is unused, it's a safe assumption that Salem knows how to use said relic. She will ask the relic who are all the other maidens. Once they have that info, and I would assume the main characters would assume that they would ask for and this is as much as I hate to say it like Ozpin might surface his ugly fucking head and be like we have to locate the other maidens as soon as possible to keep the other relics safe from happening so that could potentially be the end game of this volume is is Team Ruby and company fend off like the two attacks for both parties lose the relic in the process and then the next volumes basically become a mad scramble to uh, to get th to secure the other maidens uh. so that they are safe uh, from being like captured or assimilated by maybe Salem and company. And, Ruby, and maybe Ruby's or who knows. Maybe, maybe in that case they would have to like split up again or something like that. Like that, like Yang's all like, "We need to get back to Vey." Or no, that wouldn't happen well, because that Yang could be the thing that also is like that could push Raven them went, to the so... other kingdoms. So like, there's that, and I mean, yeah, who knows? I, be, yeah. you could even argue too, like Raven could die in the process because it's like, well, we want to take a chess piece off the board. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Right now, I think I don't know thing I'm currently wondering, like, the big thing I've been theory of, what's gonna happen to Oscar? Because something I've kind of realized throughout, the, like, just looking back on, like, this volume and what's happening, what's going on, is that Oscar, they don't really have any more excuses to keep Oscar around. Like... They don't. Yeah, like, they, and like, like I don't know, after I... At first, I would have said purpose, but he never really served a purpose that couldn't be filled by anyone else. No, he didn't. So they no longer have. So like, they no longer have an excuse to keep Oscar around because we know everything that we wanted to know about Ozpin, and he didn't even tell us any of that stuff. Ironically, well, he told us a couple of things, but anyway, so he didn't even tell us any of that stuff, and uh, like, 
I I don't know. A lot of people are saying, well, you know, he could hold a lot with Ironwood and stuff like that. Ironwood resents Ozpin as of like volume four. We saw that Ironwood blames Ozpin for everything that went wrong during the Battle of Beacon, that he, you know, is still holding a grudge. I I'm, I think Ozpin's burned all of his bridges bet- all the bridges between him and Oz- and Ironwood. So I don't think so I don't think that's an excuse anymore. So Oscar doesn't really have any purpose in existing anymore except to help o- Ozpin get with Ruby. <laughs> And so, yeah, anyway, sorry, just had to drop that one in there. Oh, you're so, <laughs> yeah, so this is something that I've been thinking, that I was kind of thinking about as a possibility, because Ozpin's whole, and, I don't know, I'm slightly, le- I, I'm slightly less convinced that this would happen uh, after the Ruby Rewind, because Miles is pretty much confirmed that, like, the audience's responses has nothing to do with whether or not they uh, kill off characters or stuff like that. And media, I think you're on mute, actually. But so, but something that I'm thinking that they might end up doing is since the whole thing of Ozpin being cursed has kind of been retconned away as of this volume. You know, he chose to because he chose to come back the god of light gave him a choice and he's basically just you know he yeah so the god of light gave him a choice to come back so something i could possibly see happening and i think that this would also like really um also that they can use this to fully solidify the fact that neo is a villain villain this could be that irredeemable thing that they said Neo was going to do. Is Neo kills Oscar. And potentially even like... Or yeah, so Neo kills Oscar. And Ozpin, like, as a result of that, basically decides that he's done. Oh, that'd be like, so he, good. How is that be like, irredeemable? Like that'd make appear- Neo like, instantly appears- become my favorite character ever. <laughs> but the question is, is like how like he doesn't like he's I think he's he's been in like multiple like he's been in like times like that before like where he's just like it's like he's he where he's he, been down for what does he have a choice at this point? Yeah, Retcon. that is, that is something I'm currently Retcon. wondering about. Is retcon? He can yeah. fuck off. Yeah, that the, yeah that is part of it. That this would be a pretty big red. Like, but who cares? If but, he fucked but up, that I... is kind of the question because like the god of because like like I said, the god of light gave him a choice. You know, he said, do you want to go back and stuff like that? But it kind of felt like he was also kind of saying, you know, if you make this choice, there's no going back. But so, but, like, but they also implied that, you know, he's, that there's usually a period of time between when he goes back and when he, well, yeah, between when he dies and when he comes back. So something I could potentially see happening is that Oscar dies, Ospin goes in front of the God of Light and the God of Light, it's all like, you know, do you want me to send you back right away, or do you want me, or do you want a little more time? And Ospin basically says, like, either says, uh, you know, I think I need, you know what? Like, kind of has this look on his face, like, where he kind of says, you know, I think I think I need a little bit of time before I go back this time. With this look on his face that kind of lets you know he's going to stay away from a wa- for a while. Because he basically, or he just says, like, I think I'm done. I think it's time for me to move on because I have really only made things worse and I've passed on everything I could possibly pass on to them. Even actually, like, I've passed on all the knowledge I have or all the knowledge that I have has been passed on. And he basically says, I think I'm done. I think it's time for me to just move on. And so he basically, like, that's kind of what he says to the God of Light and stuff like that. And maybe he's also kind of like, you know, I don't know. Maybe he appears to Salem to basically say, like, I'm done trying to fix you. I'm done trying to stop you. I'm sorry, th- like, I'm sorry that you've become this way, but I can't help you anymore. I'm not going to stop you. My students are. And, and this is also just like, I don't know. This is just my mind taking things going really far out here but like maybe because again Oscar really doesn't deserve everything that's gone wrong in his life here 
But maybe Ozpin basically says to the God of Life, look, I did not bring balance to that kid's life. He did not deserve any of what happened to him. You know, ultimately, I just uprooted him. He really had no stake in any of this. None of this was, you know, ultimately, he was just along for the ride. Like, this would kind of be them, like, admitting the problem of Oscar's ex entire existence in the first place, which I'm not sure they're humble enough to do it. But basically, he says, like, you know, is there anything you can do? And the God of Light basically says, only just this once. Just this once. Oscar appears on his farm... And here's Osman's voice in his head, head basically say, like, live your own life, choose your own path, and stuff like that. And Oscar basically says, goodbye, Ruby. Runs inside, says, I'm home. Never comes out again for the rest of the series. Like, I don't know. So maybe they do that. That's like... The... That's a little bit com convoluted, I feel like. I, I get... <laughs> yeah, so... I don't think you yeah, need to do so all like... that to just have them just get the fuck rid of them. Like... Yeah, so maybe not, but like, I don't know. I feel. I think it's just easier know. kill him, and then Ozpin doesn't come back. Like they figure out a way for Ozpin not to come back, which is either he chooses. I, not I would. To... I would rather just like yeah. they give Oscar back his, uh, you know, what's it called? What's that word that we use? That's escaping Agency? my mind. Um. Um, agency yeah that's the word agency, yeah, agency. What if they, i'd still prefer what if they he just give die. oscar his agency back <laughs> no because he's like they still, give him his agency no. back they and he still, decides to go they've still fucked him up too far they still fucked him up too much i so, don't know so so i i have but like I uh know. i i was trying to cut in earlier sorry um, about that you said you said something about um him burning all his bridges with ironwood yeah. i don't by that at all reason being hmm. the last time that ironwood and ozpin spoke ironwood was apologizing to ozpin about bringing his army to Vale and having penny oh, it was apologizing for okay yeah 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 like the, he has no idea well yeah that, that's the last time they that, talked but the last time we saw ironwood he's talking about how Ozpin wouldn't listen to him if Ozpin had just listened yeah, but, to him. But that, but that was, nothing would that have was, happened. That, that was back in Volume Two, though. That was back. Like, no, that was back I, in Volume Four. No, back in yeah, Volume Four, he was saying if he was addressing that in Volume Four, but what Ironwood is talking about was in Volume Two when Ozpin didn't send his entire army to stop Torchwick and the White Fang and uh, Mountain Glen. I guess I just really don't want Oscar to have it. <laughs> uh, I, I just... don't know. I. It's one of the those show's things. still better with just better without Ospin to... and Oscar. Yeah, and it's like, I want the characters, like, the main characters, I want Team Ruby to build bridges to Ironwood, not yeah. cross over Ospin's bridge to him. Which, yeah. I mean, they, they, already, they already have two bridges. They have Weiss and Yang. And, yeah. and Ruby, to, to a lesser extent. Uh, because, like, Iron, Ironwood has already championed Ironwood's Ruby express... as, like, a true, yeah. a true huntress. Like what yeah, a hunter should really respect be. respect for Ruby. Uh, so. and, and then uh, with Yang, with uh, giving her the robot arm, and then uh, Weiss in Volume Four saying that uh, Atlas Academy always has its doors open for her. Yeah. So. Yeah. So again, it's like I really don't see like, why I, I really, they need really Oscar think, to keep being around. But like, I, I really think that uh, Ironwood would have mad respect for Weiss for actually taking the initiative and going to Mistral to reunite with her friends and then fighting in the Battle of Haven and, and fighting to protect the Relic throughout this vault. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. I just really think they, I don't know. I think... We're still having the same Oscar problem Ozpin, of Oscar needs to fuck off. Yeah, Oscar and like, I really feel like off. Oscar and Ospin have served their purposes. I really want this volume to end with them either fading into like the back or just passing. getting yeah just getting written out of the show altogether which so i've wanted that for my, years like miles had, <laughs> so miles has said that like you know his you know the theme that he's talking about could potentially uh spoil the rest of the volume my hope is that what the theme is is moving on without authority figures and stuff like that like yeah like coming up with your, um Fuck the hey. state. Fuck governments. No. no people to control us. Yeah. Kind of, just yeah. like, you know, that. Anarchy. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. 
<laughs> or it needs to be a gun on screen. But but just like them basically saying, you know, you know what? Forget you know, forget Crow, forget Ozpin. Let's figure this out ourselves because this needs doing. We do need to do like Salem needs to be stopped, even if we can't kill her. She needs to be stopped. And even if even with with or without Crow and Ozpin. So that is what I hope the theme is that they're going for. So we'll see what happens there, and that's yeah, what I hope they do, but yeah. Do you think Crow uh, will survive the end of this volume? I don't know. Uh, and again, like I said, I like, it's, it's with, 50 with Crow's recent drop in popularity. I'm not sure if like that Neo killing him would be enough to get everyone to hate him. He's so still again, like, favorite. Yeah, Neo but, they said, Oscar, but they said that years that ago. Would... But they said that years ago. And he's still he's still like everyone's like a majority's favorite. Like even with him just being like. I still don't understand how anybody thinks Oscar is a good character. It just boggles my fucking mind. Yeah, and I think there are opinions, I, I, but then there's just being wrong, and yeah. that is one example, as I mentioned last week. Like, yeah, and one other thing he that still I heard, doesn't do and... jack. He still isn't doing jack shit. Like, even if they use him, yeah. to like he's stumble been upon something, this volume, but yeah. he's still really he not hasn't done anything so. really. The one thing he did was tell them that like Ozpin's hiding something from them. It's the one. <laughs> good thing yeah. he's ever done and it's not even close to making up for all the shit and the nothing that he's done yeah he's and literally so... he's what's what's the if you guys ever watched Bar a very potter musical yes no he he's just a spare he's just a guy that's always around he's such a spare <laughs> yeah. kill, kill the spare thank you kill the spare kill the spare but, yeah so yeah, and so that's another thing is like, yeah, I feel like they, I don't know. Hopefully this volume ends with, yeah, Ozpin and Oscar, like, hopefully gone. And like, so a rumor that I've heard, I don't know if this is true, but someone claims that uh, Rooster Teeth may have leaked that there's actually going to be two deaths this volume. In which case, kind of what I would theorize is Oscar dies, Maria dies, and Crow just goes full on alcoholic and basically says, I'm done, I'm done, I'm just gonna drown myself in alcohol and basically just stays in Argus and they all basically say, you know what? Forget them, we just have to go on and we have to do this without them and it's the seven important characters that we care about moving on. That would be great. I know I'm, I know people are still saying Ren, or, Ren and or Nora again, which again Carlos, makes shut the fuck up. makes less, <laughs> which actually makes less sense than ever before, because they haven't done jack shit with those two characters in two volumes. Yeah. So if also, one of them dies, yeah. the impact of the other one being angry or whatever doesn't mean anything. Yeah. That would be so dumb. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to be pretty friendly with people, but with, I'm with dude on this one. Those people who, tell, who are asking for Renora does just need to shut the fuck up. It's just yeah. fucking, they're retarded. I don't understand. Like, there's literally no yeah. good reason to kill them. No yeah. good reason whatsoever. By the Again, way, the it's not just because I like them. Yeah. There's characters I like where I completely understand them being killed. It's because it's yeah. bad. That I would be bad like writing. Crow. I like Crow. I like Crow, and I like Crow this volume. It makes sense to kill him. I love yeah. Winter. I like Maria. Ma I, I like Maria. Kill it makes sense to kill her. I like Maria a lot more than Oscar, but it still makes it actually, yeah. unfortunately, makes even more sense to kill Maria than Oscar because it's kind of you have to retcon stuff to kill Oscar as much as I'd prefer Oscar dying. Yeah. You know, even I understand that killing Ren or Nora or both makes no fucking sense. You get absolutely nothing out of it. All those people who say that are fucking idiots. Yeah, but something I could see. Yeah, or yeah, it's just something else. I was. I know this episode, don't know if you guys caught it, but a little bit of sound trivia that lets us know that Ren and Nora are sharing a room is when Nora and yeah. Ren and Nora have their moment of like, you know, we need some time alone. Nora goes up the stairs. Is it we bad that I wanted just to hear like loud moaning from no, no, no. the just, just sexual a little... ranger? Yeah. No, just, just... It's not quite that over, no. but what we hear is Nora goes upstairs, we hear the door to her room open. Ren goes upstairs. We hear the door to that room. We hear close. the door close. Yeah. They they're sharing a room. Woohoo! They might be sharing it with John, but I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> but yeah, but Nora held the room open for Ren. They're probably angry fucking. 
Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> what we, I mean, I fucking get frustrations away, but anyway. <laughs> that's the better be. That's what be better the fuck be happening. Yeah. Also, Ruby's the only one who could calm Sean down. Lancaster! But anyway. Yeah, yep. Lancaster intensifies. Lancaster doesn't. Lancaster and Renor intensify. It's just. <laughs> the, the best ship and a very good ship, because let's be honest, Renor is still the best ship. Even if you are a Lancaster shipper, Renor is the best ship. Yeah. Is Media still here? Who knows? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here. Okay. He's just in oh, deep man. thought with his Santa hat. He's just like. Uh, I'm actually playing a game on my phone. No, nice. Oh, <laughs> I, I think. I, I think, think, I think that, that means it's you, time to yeah, wrap, no, up. We need to wrap it up. I'm sorry, I. You son of a sock, you Biz Media. Really. I'm fun. sorry, I took a lot of tangents here. My bad. That's okay. That's what it's for, man. Uh, but yeah, I know. If anyone has any closing. I, I have no problem with listening to theories about why Oscar should die. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, never I would, apologize. I would love it if they would just never apologize for oh. explaining why Oscar needs to die. I don't ever explain. I don't ever apologize for that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't have anything. Oh to, I don't have anything to plug, yeah. so I'm done. Unfortunately, uh, I don't either. I need to start writing again. You do. You're still missing quite a few videos that you haven't been seen because you've been you've been yeah. talking about them. Oh wait, uh, hold up a second. Uh, we need to check something too. Before hey, yeah, check we, uh, the. Uh, oh, yeah, check the email. We're only gonna. Uh, I, I guarantee we'll only. I'm sure we'll only be disappointed and look more stupid. Hold up a second. We gotta check the Gmail. Don't say the emails are stupid. This no, no. Is how we I'm saying <laughs> no. I'm saying we'll look stupid because there won't be any. Oh, uh, there aren't any. See, that's <laughs> what I said. Now we look stupid. Uh, Who looks no, stupid? Look kind of um, but yeah, uh, send you send us emails, guys. We will we do answer questions on this podcast. We did do uh, that. Answer questions, yeah. Also, join the Discord. Join the Facebook anyway. group. Yada yada yada. That's what I meant by "we'll look stupid." Send that's us why, love. That's what I was telling. That's what I was trying to oh. warn you about. High powered. <laughs> Oh yeah, and since media won't say it, be sure if you enjoy this podcast, please make sure to like the video oh, and hit that sub button. But okay, <laughs> yeah, I, I and say make it. sure to hit the. You're sitting playing a game, okay? Media, someone has to fill the role. Okay. I can do okay? both. I can do both. I can do both. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. doing. Sock was doing a good job. This, this last little bit of the podcast is fucked. <laughs> no. sorry, guys. We are charming as fuck. We should yeah, probably tell us before we start the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I, usually, <laughs> I usually do. I You're usually charming do. as fuck. Uh, I didn't. I didn't this time though. But uh, anyway, as far as my plugs, yes, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I'll Make sure hit the little bell icon. Yeah. Do I even have that? You should. I don't know. I don't think. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can see that on your own channel. So someone would have to confirm that for me. You should. Um. Uh. If I do, yes, definitely do that. Um, review will be out Saturday, per usual. Uh, next week, I'm going to try having a Christmas-themed uh, movie review out. Uh, the audio on that has been cursed. <laughs> Otherwise, it would already be done. Uh, I've had to re-record it several times uh, to try to fix the audio. Please tell me it's not uh, I do not like that movie. Yeah. Uh, no, no, it's not going to be. Media, you do have a bell icon. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to confirm uh, yeah, that hit, for you. Hit the, hit the bell. Uh, that way cool. you actually get notified when I do videos. Um, then, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to have another thing next week. I'll try coming out with uh, two videos next week since we're going, going to have the hiatus. Uh, I just don't know what kind of video it's going to be because I don't Sad know how much times. time I'm going to have because I don't know how long I'm going to be at my sister's uh, for Christmas um, mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm not going I'm not going to be at my computer for like at least a day or two um, maybe even more depending on how long I decide to stay there uh, also uh, my fan fiction Ruby on home is uh, it is ramping up through its final arc it will be on break though because something <sighs> I'm going to do to pass the time while I'm at my sister's just is, act casually uh, just act manly the third installment oh. <laughs> wait does does ruby give birth at this point uh, no, she i thought she already did yeah, yeah, she, she did, she did. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, did. that's how just act maturely ended was uh does, does to just john act accidentally on purpose be... knock up yang weiss and blake in the process oh <laughs> uh no no it's going to be uh like, like, uh, the the premise is that, uh, Ruby is still a little immature, and Jean is putting his foot down, 
Oh. But the main plot By is actually going to be... By putting his foot down, don't you mean flopping out his magnum dong on the table be like, hey... I mean, if that was going to I'm work. the man in charge here, you gotta do what I say. But the but the main plot is actually going to be Jean and Ruby basically having a couple counseling with Blake and Sun. So it's oh, also no. going to be a Black Sun. Uh, mm. that's, that's, <laughs> that's where the idea that's where the idea actually came in. Uh, and I just nice. noticed that there's like a Lancaster picture behind Sock. Oh yeah, something something yeah. I did. Yeah, something this is I a... thought about actually from or something else I was thinking about Here's for a chibi. An idea I heard from someone put throw out for a chibi skip was the idea of. Uh, Salem and Osman going to marriage counseling and stuff like that. Something I would add to that is that Tai Yang is the marriage counselor, and Salem just so Salem can get out this line. Uh, Wait, is that, a, uh, is this that a line of, picture? Why are we getting advice yeah. from a man who's been married twice? Anyway, yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then you be uh, like, "Hey, only one of them left me. The other one died." <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Robert, oh, yeah, that was fun so that was funnier than every chibi skit from from the last chibi season. Good job. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Anyway, uh, they should hire you as a writer. Uh, yeah, they should I hire would be all a... of us. That's uh, true. I can only write. I can only write Yang episodes. That's all I can do. High, high power not, would high power would be allowed to write Ruby. He'd only be allowed to write. He'd only be allowed to write Red versus Blue. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, oh, I, yeah, and and I did publish chapter eight of my fanfiction, and I'm slowly working on chapter nine. I'm gonna have a lot of free time over Christmas break. Here's, here's the thing, guys. I want to point something out. I feel, like if me out. And, I feel like if me and media tried to write together, we would. Done. You never get anything done. Out. No. Here, here, here's a, <laughs> I do have to point something out, guys. I don't know why. No, we've never realized this. Um, you guys always say my fanfiction, but nobody ever gives the links or the names or anything to like where to find I, the I, stuff. I, 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 I know. Have, I, I don't think I've said Ruby Twenty Twenty. That's my so. Fanfiction. If you if media wants to put a link into my fanfiction, it is Ruby Operator, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's actually got a pretty decent viewership. Whatever I posted the current chapter. So whoever's looking over that chapter, I appreciate that you've read it. I'm also really sorry that it took such a long time to get that chapter out. Didn't it take like a year? Basically, yeah. it took a year. I'm super sorry. Um, man, well, people by that time I would have. Oh man, I, I just remember like it's taken me well over a year now to do Ruby on Home. I've been, I started working on that last October, uh, leading up to Volume Five. One thousand chapters later. <laughs> uh, no, I'm on. Uh, what is it like? Chapter eighty now, I think. Uh -huh. How many chapters total of Ruby on have you written though? Like 300, 400? Please, please be Something 1488 like chapters. <laughs> uh, it is, I have it is, it is in the many. It is in the thousands. Many, it's a it's lot. several hundred though. <laughs> I could probably actually do the math on that right now. Oh, uh, no, I don't. Yeah, no, uh, math is terrible. No, no, I, I wanted to, I didn't want to like hit have uh the push to talk button and then click on something because it tries downloading well oh, anyway the I important thing the important thing is there's going to be a fan fiction where there's a force in between black sun and and lancaster that's what we know is going to happen so yeah <laughs> i mean i wasn't planning it but now i am yeah so you exactly. said it. let's be real let's be real here i thought that was the whole point just act men all right. Yeah, well, I night. think I okay. think we can shut it down now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. This <laughs> last bit of the podcast <laughs> just was all over the place on so... this one, but that's okay because we are. Trying. This this has oh, been. Okay. This is this has, comedy? <laughs> this has been yeah. completely. Yes, it is. <laughs> this has been. I'm the, this has been the complete. No. The fandom is a comedy. Yeah, yeah. this is true. This I is... hope everyone has a safe and uh, happy Merry Christmas. Uh, I'm gonna go yeah. skiing. I hope I don't nice. break both legs in the process. I haven't been skiing since 2011. Oh, nice. Shit snowboard. So no. No skiing's. No. I I snowboard. Skiing is way better than snowboarding. That is I, like. I mean, that is factual. No, you can literally go faster on skis. You have more control with skis. For but just, you don't look as cool skiing. But skiing you gotta is live just on the edge. factually better. All right. I just I just saw. Right. Uh, I just did the math. Five hundred and seventeen chapters. <laughs> and on nice. that note, this has been the completely depraved Ruby podcast. <laughs>
Enjoy Merry, Merry, Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas, Happy everybody. Merry Christmas. Enjoy this time of year. Just yeah. enjoy it however you choose to. And most importantly, fuck Happy Holidays and fuck Oscar. <laughs> <laughs>